Teacher Kim. Subscribe and like. Hey, lessons, teacher. Kim Hobinian. Today we'll be talking about how to create sentences in Korean. So, is it similar to formulating sentences in English compared to how to formulate sentences in Korean? Uh, they're similar but different. Okay, so how are they different? Because, first of all, Korean sentences are in formulation of S O V, which means subject, object, and verb. Okay. However, English is a little bit different. It's S V O, it's subject, verb, object. For example, if I say, I eat apple, I is subject, eat is verb, and apple is the object of the whole sentence, right? So it's how the English words are formulated. So, but in Korean, if I say, I eat apple, it wouldn't be in that same order. It would be, 나는, which is the subject, 사과를, which is the object, 먹습니다, which is eating, which is a verb. So S O V. Uh, for example, 친구가 사탕을 먹어요. And if you were to literally translate that into English, it would be friend candy eat, which wouldn't make sense in English. And then if you were to translate it in SVO way, the English way, it would be my friend is eating candy, where my is uh, omitted, which I will talk about later of why a lot of subjects are actually omitted and my, uh, in another video of why my something, which is uh, is omitted in Korean sentences as well. Okay. And then the first rule of SOV is subject, object, and verb. So is it always that way? No, it doesn't need to be. Okay. The first example is subject can be omitted in a lot of examples. And actually in Korea, a lot of Koreans don't really necessarily put subject in every sentence because we already know who the subject is, especially if you're talking to them or if you're talking about the subject in the first place. Okay. So for example, if I say 나는 지금 배고파, which would mean I am hungry right now. 나는 is subject, 지금 is right now, and 배고파 is I'm hungry. But that would also mean the same thing if I were to say 지금 배고파. If you were to omit 나는 I am, it would still mean I am hungry right now in Korean. Because if you're the person who's saying it, then it would make sense that you are the one being hungry if you were to say Hungry. Okay. So another example can be 너는 어디가? Which would mean where are you going? However, you don't always need to put 너는, which is you, to ask where that some person is going. Okay, so you can just say 어디가? We already know who that person is asking because if I was to ask a B person 어디가, then I would be curious where B is going, right? So I don't need to specifically say, hey, 너는 B, where are you going? No need to do that. Number two example can be before the verb, the order of subject and object can be switched. And what do I mean by it? I'll give you a pretty fun example right now. There's an example here that says, 친구가 나에게 사탕을 주었다, which means a friend gave me a candy, right? That makes sense. But that, that also would make sense if you were to change the order of subject and object, which is, 나에게 친구가 사탕을 주었다 which would also mean friend gave me a candy okay. and also 사탕을 친구가 나에게 주었다 friend gave me a candy and then also 사탕을 나에게 친구가 주었다 which would also mean friend gave me a candy and notice that all these four sentences have 주었다 which means to give and the order of the verb does not change but before the verb the order of subject and object can be switched uh, in any way form you want okay so that's the interesting thing about uh, formulating Korean sentences okay so we looked at these two uh, examples using SOV and a lot of people may assume that to formulate Korean sentences uh, you just need subject object verb and that's it but a lot of times subjects are not even needed to formulate Korean sentences uh, as well as the order of subject object before the verb can be switched in any order possible uh, depending on what you want to emphasize which you cannot do it in English language okay so actually one of the funny stories that's related to formulating Korean sentences uh, without needing the subject in the first place 
is when I was in Korea, it's a story that I heard from one of uh, one of my friends who goes to Yonsei University, he's, a, he's from uh, America, and then he said that he really liked uh, Korean sentences because he didn't need to put the subject in the beginning, meaning that if he was to go out to some club or bar uh, and then ask somebody out, then uh, he doesn't need to uh, say, ask for that person's name, or he doesn't need to mention that person in the first place. He can just he can just say momo goyo, which is uh, what are you eating, and uh, so you can basically continue the Korean sentences asking each other without actually mentioning the subject in the first place, which uh, would get rid of I guess the awkwardness according to him uh, of asking that person's name out, and he can just fluently or fluidly continue the conversation on, you know, to to smooth and. Yeah, and I guess uh, yeah, I guess that was really fun for him. And and when I first heard that, I didn't I didn't really realize it because I've been speaking uh, without using the subject for a very long time. And I realized, wow, that that could also make sense. Well, this has been it. So just know that when you want to formulate Korean sentences, know that it's subject, object, verb, S O V. Okay, this is very easy to solve, very easy to remember. And know that a lot of times subject doesn't even need to be mentioned. Uh, and that the order of subject and object can be switched around before the verb when formulating Korean sentences. And this has been Teacher Kim, and I hope this was helpful. And see you next time. Bye bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, students. Teacher Kim Hobini, and today we'll be learning about something very important, something that you need to know when you want to speak. Korean, which is a number system in Korean. And as you guys already know, for those of you guys who know Korean already, a little bit at least, you guys should know that there's two systems in Korean counting system. One is Korean number system, and the other one is called Sino-Korean system, which I will, for this video, will call it Chinese system as a simplicity's sake. So what are the functionalities of these two different Korean counting systems? What are they used for? So for the Korean system, uh, as it sounds like is a traditional Korean system that has been used in Korea for a very long time and it is not used to count uh, things in very large amounts but only between usually between 0 to 60 or 0 to 100 and they're used mostly to count things okay count things other than counting money okay so if you want to count something as how many people there are how many books how many chairs how many tables how many dogs, cats, anything you name it. If you want to count anything, you got to use the Korean number system. However, uh, for the Chinese system, it is used to count uh, things in a very large amount, such as uh, money or how big something is. Or it can be used for dates, phone numbers, uh, money system, as I mentioned before, um, and as well as addresses as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's go into the Korean number system first because as I said, Korean number system is not that much but even though it's not that much, it's a little bit more difficult as personally for me as, as well as other people who are learning Korean has also realized that the Korean system is a little bit harder because they're longer and they do not have that much uh, like a strict system rather than the Chinese system which they're very simple to memorize and very easy to say Okay, so let's start with the Korean number system first, okay? As I said, it's only used for uh, counting things, okay? Uh, and let's start with one is hana, hana, two is tur, tur, three is set, set, four is net, net, five is tasot. Tasot, six is yosot, yosot, seven is ilgo, ilgo, eight is yodor, yodor, nine, oh, it's hard to lift it up, nine is aho, aho, and ten is yor, yor. So these are very simple, and you will use these between 1 to 10 often because for example if you uh, go to a, a coffee shop or some tea shop and they ask you uh, like uh, which is how many cups you need how many how many drinks do you want and you can say oh, can I or can I get five cups or something like this so it's very used a lot and let's say if you're carrying some um, 
books or if you're if I'm eating like a like some tomatoes here and then if my friend says oh hangi jul so because can you give me one I can say oh you hana jul ke I'll give you one okay because tomatoes are precious right um so they they're very important because we use that in this system uh every day in so many different situations okay but this gets a little tricky because unlike um the traditional uh, and unlike the chinese system uh where after 10 it kind of repeats over itself again with like tens twenties thirties forties and hundreds and thousands but for the korean system it doesn't go over 100 first of all and then for tens to nineties they all kind of sound a little bit different and a little bit similar 20 is 스물 30 is 서른 40 is 마흔 50 is 쉰 60 is 예순 70 is 일흔 80 is 여든 90 is 아흔 and then in Korea once you go uh the age of 50 and 60 uh a lot of people have birthday parties uh for example we can say uh 예순 잔치, 일흔 잔치, 예순 잔치, 신 잔치, and all those uh, kind of celebrations to celebrate that you've lived this long. Um, which back in the day people didn't live that long compared to how people live these days. Also, those those things you can hear. But after other than those, it's it's kind of hard to hear these numbers between tens to nineties um, uh, because. A lot of people, because it's not used that often, other than for your um, uh, saying for your age or something like that. And uh, most people would use uh, the Chinese numbers for saying numbers that are kind of big. Okay. So now let's go to the Chinese uh, number system. Okay. And it comes. It's maybe it's also called the Chinese number system because it also derived from China, uh, as well as it also sounds similar. Uh, to Chinese, if you also know Chinese as well. So, one is il, il, two is e, e, three is sam, sam, four is sa, sa, five is o, o, six is yu, yu, seven is chi. Chi, eight is pal, pal, nine is gu, gu, ten is shi, shi. Okay, and then after, so as you guys probably noticed, they're very s- simple to say, and there are only a lot of them. Most of them are one syllable each. Um, and then after shi, it it repeats itself over again. So shi bi, shi bi, shi sam, shi ba, shi bo, and then when it's 20, you just put 2 and 10 together. So 2 is E, right? And then 10 is ship, so it's E ship, which is 20. And 30 is sam ship, which is 3 is sam, and 10 is ship, so sam ship. Okay. And after that, once you count all the way to 99, 100 is peg, peg, 1000 is chon, chon, 10,000 is man. Man, and it goes to ok, and then to skip a little bit to jo, okay, and then it continues on, but it's not used that much often because we use this to count numbers, how much money you have. And a lot of people, uh, in Korea as well as all the world, uh, there's very few people who has uh jo amount of money, okay. Uh, so they they're as I said they're used to count money as well as addresses and also for the time which i will make another video so after this video you will also have to uh learn something else which is about how to count things because i just showed you guys how to say these numbers but in korea you have to use something called measure word behind all the numbers okay because for people it'll be you cannot say one person in korean is han saram which is okay but when you're trying to say how many people there are, you cannot say uh, there is uh, 10 사람 or uh, 10 사람. Okay, you can say 10 명, right? Because now for that, that's counting how many people there are. 명 is the measure word. Okay, and also when you say how many trees, you can say uh, there is 
다섯 자루 outside, which is a, there's a five trees, and 자루 is a measure word for trees, and then for bottles is 병, and there's so many, so many uh, different measure words, which is, I don't have enough time for this video, but I'll make another one very soon, okay? But with this video, you can learn about how to say numbers in Korean, which is the, probably the most crucial thing when you're count, trying to count things in Korean, okay? And another thing that's important is how to tell time, because t telling time is a little bit, complicated because for the hours we use the Korean system but for the minutes we use uh, the Chinese system okay and what do I mean by that so if I say if I want to say right now it's 5 15 I can say 다섯시 시보분 다섯 as I said is five and it's in belongs in the Korean system right but 시보분 is 15 that belongs into a Chinese system okay so that's, that's where it gets a little bit tricky, but uh, other than for this video, um, as long as you know how to say 1 to 99 in Korean system, as well as uh, 1 to maybe 1,000 to 10,000, 100,000 in Chinese system, uh, then you're all set to go. And this has been it. I hope this is helpful. And then for this number system, it gets a little tricky because Korean uh, system has uh, two systems, but once you get used to it, uh, it'll, it'll be natural, but for now, I think you need to need a little bit of practice. But other than that, uh, I think you'll you'll be ready to go. Okay, and this has been Teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, this is Teacher Kim Hobani, and today we'll be talking about how to say time in Korean. Okay, so we'll be learning about she, which is to denote an hour, and bun, which means to denote the minutes. Okay, and the one thing tricky about it is that when we denote the hours. We use native traditional Korean system, number system, and then when we use the minutes, when we say the minutes, we use a Sino-Korean or Chinese system. Okay, so it gets a little bit tricky. And I already made a video uh, way before of how to uh, say numbers in Korean in two different systems, the Sino-Korean system as well as the traditional Korean system. So uh, to just summarize, the traditional Korean system can go to Hana, Dui, Sen, Net, Tasa, Yose, Yugo, Bida, Aup, Yor, Yorana, Yotu, Yose, and it can go on to 100, but you use it to denote something very small, count something very small. But the, the sign of Korean system is used for count something very big, like money. And just know that when we denote uh, hour 1 and hour 2, let's say 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, then we change a little bit of traditional Korean system, because in traditional Korean system, one is hana, but for this one, when you're counting hours, when you're counting other things, you can say han, han something, so han shi, and then two would be du shi, du shi, okay? Because in traditional Korean system, two is not two, it's tul, okay? And that's it. That's all you're just gonna be wary of. So let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hours on the clock are denoted by native Korean numbers and minutes are denoted by Sino-Korean numbers as just I said And the example is if you want to say 107 in Korean You say 한시 which is 1 o'clock and 7분 which is 7 minutes Okay And the next one is 5시 30분 5.30 5시 30분 5 is 5, 30 is 30 Okay But it can also be said 다섯시 반 because 30 is half so 반 is also half so you can say 5.30 or 5 and, 5 and half in Korean the next one is 8.58 which is 여덟시 which is 8 in native Korean and 58분 which 8 is 8 in Sino Korean so 여덟시 58분 8.58 so it gets a little bit tricky because you have to also memorize the Korean system as well as the Sino-Korean system and it gets a little bit tricky to say, oh, do I use this one for minutes? Do I use this one for hours? But once you get hang of it, it'll be very simple, okay? So one of the tips I give you is uh, just try to write down a lot of random numbers, random hours and minutes. Try to say them in Korean and make sure that you got them all right. Make sure to always keep the hours in the native Korean system and minutes in a Sino-Korean or the Chinese system. This is my teacher Kim and see you next time. Bye-bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, I'm this teacher Kim Hobinia, and today we'll be learning about the days of the week. Okay, so this is very important because in 
Any other language, knowing the days of the week is very important because let's say if your boss or your teacher says this homework or this assignment is due uh, next Friday, okay? But if you don't know what next Friday is, then how do you know, right? You mess up, okay? And, but luckily, the days of the week in Korean is very easy to learn for these two reasons. Number one, in Korea, coincidentally also have seven days like the rest of the world, okay? So there's only seven things you gotta memorize, okay? And the second thing is that in the days in Korea, there's three syllables total in all the words. And then out of the three syllables, two syllables are the same for all seven. So only thing you gotta memorize is basically eight things, okay? So first syllable for the each of the week, as well as the, the two syllables that come after the each uh, of the new syllables that come after the week, okay? So what do I mean by it? Okay, so let's go right ahead. So Monday is 월요일, 월요일. Tuesday is 화요일, 화요일. Wednesday is 수요일, 수요일. Thursday is 목요일, 목요일. Friday is 금요일, 금요일. Saturday is 토요일, 토요일. And Sunday is... Actually, Sunday shouldn't be that exciting because Sunday you have to go back to school or work. Also, uh, I'll just be like this. Sunday is uh, 일요일, 일요일. Okay. So these things, I kind of express my happiness for the weekend. But Sunday, uh, at 일요일, uh, I mean, I feel like most people suffer through Sunday because they have to go back to work or school. And so they don't really enjoy that time. But I feel like 금요일, which is Friday, and 토요일 is a time that people have the most fun. And in Korea, we have so many words that are affiliated to the, the days of the week. So for example, 불금, 불금. 불 is a fire, and 금 is 금요일, right? So fire, Friday, what does it mean? It means at Friday night after the work or the school, people can party as hard as what they want because uh, they don't have to worry about what's gonna happen tomorrow. They can sleep all day. They don't have to wake up early and go anywhere on Saturday morning, right? So on Friday night, it gets really hot in Korea. As you guys probably know if you've been to Korea, if you have Korean friends talk about Purgum, then you know that, oh, Friday night is a really lit night, okay? Uh, and then also one of my favorite artists of all time, Drake, he sings a song uh, called The Tuesday, and it goes like, like, let's go parties going up. I'm not sure the exact lyrics, but it goes something like, a, a club going up on a Tuesday. And then, so it's on a Tuesday, you know, why would club go up because it's not the weekend, but for Drake, it's possible, right? Um, but uh, if you want to little make it more cultural to Korean, they can say, oh, club's going up on Huayue. And if you sing that out loud with your friends or with your colleagues, people will be like, what is Huayue? And you can say, oh, this, I mean, so it's, it's Tuesday in Korean. And they'll be like, wow, you know Korean? And it's like, oh yeah, I love BTS. Oh, who's your favorite BTS member? Oh, Jin, I look like Jin. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so knowing the days of the week is very important to in survival in Korea. And it's very simple. And then, as I said, you only need to know the first syllables of each of the week to kind of get the hang of it. Because in Korean, uh, we don't really say the full days of the week often when you're with your friends or when you're trying to talk casually. Um, so when you say like, oh, I go to uh, work Monday through Friday, you don't say, uh, you don't say that, you can say uh, Or if you want to say uh, like this drama only airs on the weekend uh, You can say in Korean uh, But you can say oh, this is a toy drama toy drama so this, it can really shorten up because as you guys realize, as I also made in the other, as I also said in the other uh, slang videos before, Koreans love to shorten the words up. And there's a lot of words that can come up with shortening the, the Korean days of the week. So if you know the Korean days of the week, then the other slang, you just gotta learn the other part and you'll be set, okay? So this has been it. Just memorize. Fire Friday. Toil. Weekend. Where people work, suffer. Yeah, that's all. 
Uh, that's all for today, and this has been Teacher Kim, and I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Teacher Kim. Subscribe and like. Hello, this is Teacher Kim Hobinia, and today we'll be talking about seasons of the year. Yay, seasons. The seasons are very exciting because how many seasons are there? Well, in Korea, uh, we have four seasons, four seasons, very, four very distinctive seasons because of the location of where South Korea is located, okay? So which means during the summer, it's very, very hot. During the winter, it's very, very cold. Uh, the perfect times are, I can say, fall and spring, which is uh, not, not, not as long as I personally want it to be, okay? Um, so how do we say those four seasons in Korean? Okay, I'll tell you right now, and I'll also show you guys a song near the end. Uh, which will remind you of the song because in Korea we have a lot of music, right? K-pop. Within the K-pop, there's so many different musics, and there has been music even before the word K-pop was even invented. Uh, and then those songs are a reminder of all these different seasons. So when the season uh, spring comes up or season winter comes up, in a lot of stores and restaurants and all over Korea, you can hear those hit songs that really reminds us of that uh, weather. Or of that season, I mean. So without further ado, let's learn the seasons in Korean. How to say them? Okay, so we'll start with spring because for some reason in Korea we always start with um, spring when we when we when we say the seasons. I'm not sure why. Okay, I don't know if it also happens in English. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's start with spring, which is pom. Pom. Okay, it's very simple, right? It's just one syllable. Uh, and then the summer, uh, which is something that happens after spring, is yorim. Yorim. Okay. And then what happens after summer? Fall, right? Okay. And then for other people, maybe it's called autumn. Okay. Fall, autumn, autumn. It is kaul. Kaul. And the next one is kyoul. Kyoul. So you can say pom yorim kar gyo, which is spring, summer, fall, winter. Nice. Okay. And then in Korea, like it depending on which month you're born, you can you can kind of predict: Are you a summer baby? Are you a fall baby? Are you a winter baby? Are you a spring baby? For me, I'm a winter baby because I was born in February. Um, and then, so the usage of this uh, seasons aren't aren't as great as. Uh, like on oh, the number system in Korea or the, the days of the week um, or the months uh, but I guess the, the seasons are, are pretty pretty important because um, depending on different seasons uh, I mean to be honest like seasons like it's, it's, it's something that you gotta know like you know in in, uh, uh, in each country's uh, languages um, there's always those things that you kind of really uh, put those four seasons of how to say them in Korea into your brain. Pom yorim kargyeol. Very simple. Just pom yorim kargyeol. And then you're set. Just meet anybody. And you can even name yourself one of the seasons. So you can never forget how to say the seasons in Korea. Okay. So as I said, you wouldn't say this every day. But it's good to know them. And that's all for today. And this is from Teacher Kim. And see you next time. Bye bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, I'm Teacher Kim Hobinia, and today we'll be learning about nasal assimilation. What is nasal assimilation? Okay, it's kind of sounds very complicated, right? But with me on my left hand, I'm holding a tomato, and in Korea, in Korean, if I want to say this is tomato, what do I have to say? I say, 이것은 토마토입니다, right? 토마토입니다. But for after tomato. It should be imida, right? But nobody says imida, it's imida with a mean m sound as a pachimpa for im. Okay. So but why does that happen? It's written with a p as a pachim. But why does it convert into mium when I say it in a sentence? Okay, it's because of nasal assimilation. So we'll we'll look at a total of three rules today according to nasal assimilation. Okay, and then these all have to do with either mium or nin following the consonants which change the whole pronunciation. Okay, so number one is when there's pium, pium before the mium or nin, then it always changes into mium. 
For example, imida to imida, as I just said. Or, komapsumida to komapsumida. Just notice that the p underneath s turns into mium, okay, because of the nasal simulation. So that's the number one example. Number two is when there's diut, tigut, siot, sang siot, jiot, chiot, hiot. And if there's mium or neon that follows after it, then it always turns into neon. For example, if I want to say I believe something, it's minnenda, right? But for the mi, patim is tigut, but that tigut turns into neon, minnenda, right? Okay. And number three is when there's kiot, kiok, or sangio, and if there's mim or neon after, then it always turns into iom. For example, uh, if I want to say something about last year, I can say, uh, last year I ate a tomato. I can say, uh, and if you uh, focus on my pronunciation, I don't say 작년에, I say 작년에. But the way it's written is that it's 기억받침 underneath 자, right? But it turns into 이응받침 underneath 자 uh, when I say it out loud because of the nasal assimilation. Okay, so these can be confusing because a lot of times when people are learning Korean and when they try to write down what people say and when they try to say uh, the things uh, written down the Hangul, they might pronounce differently because they read it purely as it is. But a lot of Koreans know that uh, there's a automatic sound shift ha that happens according to nasal assimilation. Okay, for Koreans, they don't really need to know about these rules because it's already ingrained, ingrained into their brain. But for people who are just learning Korean, it may be a little bit hard in the beginning to kind of grasp the idea of uh, how we don't exactly pronounce everything that's written the way it is in Hangul. But these things happen automatically in our brain. So one thing I suggest you is always look out for uh, these three types of examples uh, that can occur and then try to read out loud uh, either a story or book or song uh, and then also try to listen to how other Koreans say it and you will always realize that the nasal assimilation always happens. So imida, minnenda, changyeon um, and there's so many things uh, out there and then later once you get really good at it you won't even need to a warrior focus about nasal assimilation because something that you would all make you know by nature okay and then but it's very important if you want to sound fluent like korean to truly understand uh, then not every hangul the way it's written is way it's said um and then and this was the first step uh, in learning it and also in the future i'll make another videos also relating to sound shift changes and this is my teacher kim and see you later bye bye Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, I'm is teacher Kim Hobin here, and then today I'll be focusing on the sound shift change rules, a specific neon to deal assimilation. Okay, so there's two possible things that can happen uh, within to neon to deal assimilation. It can be neon plus lear, or it can be lear plus neon. But you always gotta know that neon always changes lear in either cases. So what do I mean by it? If you look at this example, if you say Shilne, Shilne, then it always changes to Shilne, Shilne. And then another example for the first example can be Seolnal, Seolnal, is always Seolnal, Seolnal. And then for the second one, Neon to uh, Neon plus Little one can be Shilla, Shilla, and then Wolle, Wolle. Okay, so when the Neon and Lir meet, the need is re replaced by lear, okay? And then when lear is followed by uh, near, then it's always replaced with uh, lear as well, okay? So that's why sometimes when Koreans uh, say these kind of words, oh, if you try to write down exactly what they say, your hangul may be wrong because of these uh, assimilation that happen, that occur, okay? And a lot of Koreans, as I said in the other videos, uh, are not gonna be aware of these, especially if you're trying to uh, find a Korean to practice your Korean or trying to ask them why it happens. It's just na it's just natural for Koreans. But for people who are learning Korean, all these rules are not natural, right? So these are things that you have to understand and learn. And once you get to the stage where your Korean 
uh, is fluent, then you won't even need to remember. You will just forget all these rules because it'll be na uh, natural into your brain, ingrained into your brain. Okay. Uh, so one key to kind of understand is so when there's a word and within the word if there's there's a nian and lir that is next to each other then you always gotta know that nian turns into lir. Yeah, I think this this has been pretty a uh, short lesson. Nian to lir. Always remember that nian turns into lir when they're next to each other and always be look out. But it doesn't change it when there's theosuke which is a space. So only know that when it's inside a word together as a pachim to consonant or consonant to pachim. That's it. Okay. And this is Teacher Kim, and bye bye. See you next time. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, I'm Teacher Kim Hobini, and today we'll be learning about tensification. What is tensification? One of the biggest example is when we say, which is when your mom is angry, and let's say you didn't wash your clothes, and you can say, Oh, Hobina, why don't you do this? Like, make me do it. Okay? Uh, and 몇 번이나 is how many times but 몇 번 is the way we say it, right? but when we try to run to hunger, it is 몇 번 몇 번 not 번 which is a 쌍비오 okay so why is it when we say it it turns into 쌍비오 when it's only 비오 it's because of tensification because when there is something called plosive consonants which are a which are consonant produced by stopping the flow of air at some point and suddenly releasing it, which are consonants such as kyo, tigut, pio, shio, or jio. And if those plosive consonants are preceded by a plosive or fricative consonants, which is kyo, tigut, or pio, as pachim, it becomes a corresponding tense consonant, which can be either sangbyo, sangdigut, sangjigut. Sangkyo, okay. And other than myopban, it can be another word that can turn into this is opta, opta, which is uh, I don't have it, or there's none. Okay. So if I want to say, for example, uh, can you give me some tomatoes? And if I don't want to give that person, oh, there is a tomato opta, which is I don't have tomato, right? But where I write opta in Hangul is not sang. Uh, tigut is ta is right. It's only one tigut, okay, of ta. But when we say it out loud, it turns into sound tigut because of tensification, because of the plosive sounds, and because those are consonant sounds are very aggressive and have a lot of air going out. That's why it naturally becomes sound tigut or sound jiu, uh, which has a lot of emphasis uh, on its syllables or on its consonants. Okay, so it just becomes natural that way. And then for tensification, if you were to learn Korean without actually learning Hangul, which is not something I would recommend, this would come naturally because all the Koreans say with the tensification. And then when we write it down, we sometimes write it with the tensification if you're not very uh, careful and if you don't have good knowledge of Hangul, which actually in Korea, a lot of Koreans uh, for spelling, Parajoki, there are not a lot of people actually know the true Parajoki. Okay, we know the basic ones, but when it gets to like the uh, very small detailed uh, ones, then some Koreans may not know it as well. Okay, and that's because of rules, soundship rules such as uh, testification uh, that can change the way we say it, uh, not according to how Hangul is written. Okay, and yeah, and this has been it. Just one thing, one key to always uh, take away is always be reminded for the sound shift change rule uh, that the way we say it is not always the way it's written so just to uh, always understand it is to read a lot of books uh, listen to a lot of uh, stories uh, or music or movies and always try to see uh, the difference of what they say uh, with the hangul that's written okay and with that you will understand these rules way easier and the next time uh, when you see this video, hopefully you would already master this so you don't even need to watch it, right? Okay, and uh, just let me know down in below if you have any questions. Uh, and this is the Teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, I'm this is Teacher Kim Hobani, and today we'll be talking about something very important, which is also... So I'm pretty sure if you speak English or if you speak in any other language, every language I'm pretty sure has the word also, okay? And then we use also a lot of times because I guess humans are greedy. We don't just only want one thing, so we also want many things.
two. Okay, so I'll be teaching about something word called do, which can replace subject and object markers. Okay, so what do I mean by it? So do can also mean also as well as two or as well. Okay, um, so one of the examples that I can give is nado chuaheo. Nado chuaheo. So where is do in this sentence? It's after na, which is me, right? So I also like it too. Another example uh, can be 학교도 갔다 왔어요. So where is to in this sentence? Right after 학교, which is a school, and 갔다 왔어요 is went. So I went to school too. So now that we looked at these two examples, how can we use it in many other examples? So let's say it's hard to just say a word or sentence with the do in it because it means also, right? So it has to mean that there's some uh, a thing that happened, a situation that has happened that requires you to say also. For example, if somebody uh, was to ask you or ask me, hey teacher Kim, uh, do you like ice cream? And I can say, oh, 저는 ice cream 좋아해요, uh, which is, oh, I like ice cream. Uh, and then that person can also ask, uh, 포도도 좋아해요? Uh, which podo is grapes, right? And say podo do joy. I also like grapes. So this example is a little hard because podo do, <laughs> because there's two dos. So I'll give you an easier one, which is kwaja do joaseo, which is do you like uh, snacks too? And I can say kwaja do joaseo. I also like snacks too. So you use also uh, every day uh, in, uh, when formulating Korean sentences. Uh, and it's very useful to know that we always put do as an object or subject marker so always put it after a noun that you want to be inclusive of and then uh, you say uh, the verb after okay um yeah and this has been teacher kim and then see you next time bye bye teacher kim subscribe and like hello and teacher kim hobani and today we'll be learning about hada and heyo so what is hada and heyo in the first place? If you already know a little bit of Korean or know them pretty well, you already have heard about hada and heyo a lot of times because hada and heyo in English equivalent is to do or doing. Okay? And of course, as in any other language and any other countries, people do a lot of stuff, right? And because people do a lot of stuff, when different people interact, we're of course gonna use this type of language a lot, which is to do or or doing. For example, uh, if one of uh, my friend was asked, "Hey, teacher Kim, uh, what are you doing right now?" and I can say, "Oh, 저는 지금 공부해요," which is I am studying right now. Or I can say, "Oh, 저는 친구랑 이야기해요," which means uh, I am talking with my friend uh, right now. Okay. So this is very useful to learn how to use hada and heyo because it basically means to do or doing. Okay. So how can we formulate uh, this using different adjectives and verbs? Okay, so let's look at the examples. Okay. So to do, first of all, is a present tense of to do. And then there's also informal polite form of hada, which is heyo. Okay. And we put it after a verb. For example, the most basic is hada can be turned into heyo. Heyo. And then 공부하다 which is to study, as I used in the example previously, can be turned into 공부 해요, 해요. Just know that the stem does not change. Okay, so stem is 공부 and ending is 하다. So only the ending changes. So 공부 하다 to 공부 해요. 하다 changes to 해요. And the next one is 이야기 하다, which is to talk or tell a story. And 이야기 is a stem and 하다 is the ending and it will turn into iyagi stem always remains and then the ending is the one that changes to heyo okay and then last one chua hada can be turned into chua heyo so hada changes into heyo okay so again informal polite form of hada is heyo so when can we use this example especially for the last ones so to like we like a lot of stuff right we can like a person we can like an animal we can like a fruit vegetable anything we can like anything 
depending on what your preferences are, right? So let's say uh, if you have a, a rival, let's say you like this person and one of your good friend also likes that person, okay? And then, but you're not, you're close with the, your, your, the person that likes the, the same person that you like, uh, but you still have to use an informal, polite way of saying it. So you can just say, hey, let's say his name or her name was uh, Sam. Okay, so I can say, Sam, uh, so which means I like this person. I'm just basically telling this person that I like uh, this person. Okay, so it's kind of telling that person, hey, like, don't do anything. He or she is mine. Okay, so, uh, so it can be used uh, in a lot of uh, example sentences. And then, 좋아해요, we don't always need to use 해요, okay? So just always know that 해요 is only used for present tense of to do. Um, and then, but you can also so say uh, 좋아하다. For example, I can say, uh, Sam은 uh, teacher Kim을 좋아하다, okay? Or 좋아해요, which also makes sense, but it's an informal play. Okay? So just remember how to convert into hada to hail using the stem and then the endings. Don't change the stems, only the endings. And then there's a lot of different way of usage. So one of the tips is always trying to convert uh, into hada into hail in a lot of different uh, sentences as well as the another way around hail to hada. And then you'll get uh, used to hang up how to use them. And this is me teacher Kim and see you next time. Bye bye. Teacher Kim subscribe and like Hello, my name is the teacher Kim Hobani, and today we'll be talking about something very important, as I always say in all these introductory Korean uh, teaching materials. Uh, everything you learn right now is very important because these will work as your foundation uh, for everything that you will learn uh, in Korean as you get to intermediate and advanced level. Hopefully, I'll be there in all of your steps. Okay, so let's talk about something called upshida. Okay, so there's two formats that it can go. It can be uh, 비읍, 시다, or it can be 읍시다, depending on two different conditions, which I'll tell you in just a couple of seconds, okay? So what does 읍시다 even mean? You've probably heard about it a lot uh, when you hear a lot of Korean dramas or you listen to a audiobook or read a book, or whatever you do relating to Korean languages, because it means let's do something. Because Korea is a country of a proactive people, meaning that Koreans, we always undergo, we always on the ground, we always have to move, everything needs to be fast, okay? Because in a lot of Koreans uh, get angry when they go to other Western countries where the rhythm is a little bit slower than Seoul or Korea, uh, and, and then when they go to some bus station or when they go to some restaurant and things don't happen really fast, they get agitated because in Korea, when you order something, it literally comes about a second. Everything, nobody wants to waste time. We're always on the ground, we gotta do something, we gotta do something. So a lot of Koreans say, let's hapshida, more hapshida, blah, 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 hapshida, okay? So that's why it's important, even I'm speaking really fast, because I wanna save your time and my time by explaining this explanation precisely, as well as hopefully you know, you understand everything about this lesson, okay? So let's get to it, okay? So there's two, as I said, there's two situations can, can come from it, okay? So we use, Pipshida when it comes after verb stems ending in a vowel and then we use upshida if it comes after verb stems ending in a consonant. And then so what do I mean by stems and endings? Okay, so stems, for example, when we use this example of kada, stem is ka and then ending is ta. And kada is go, which is a very basic verb. Uh, and then a pure Korean verb format, we always end with ta. Okay, so ta will always be the ending. Okay, and then so ka is a stem and ta is an ending, and we always replace the ending. Okay, so so first one, so piupshida comes after a verb stems ending in a vowel. So kada would be kapshida because the stems, which is ka, ends in a vowel, right? It ends in a. So it would be kapshida because you add pip as a pachim to ka and it turns into kapshida, which is to go to let's go. Okay. And next one is kungbuhada. Kungbuhada. And as as I said, what is the stem? 
It's 공부하 and then ending is 다. All the ending is 다. Okay, so 공부하, we only gotta look at 공부하. And the ending of 공부하 is 하, right? And it ends with 아, which is a vowel. So we just add 비읍 to 하 and then add 시다. So 공부합시다. 공부합시다. Which is to study, to less study. And next one is 보다. 보다. So 보 is to, 보다 is to see. And then 보 is a stem. 다 is an ending. So 보 ends with a vowel. So it will be you add 비 as a 받침 to 보 and then add 시다. So 봅시다. Okay. So does all the examples end with 비 시다? No. Okay. So when we look at 먹다, 먹 is a stem. 다 is the ending. 먹 doesn't end with vowel. It actually ends with a consonant, which is 기억 as a 받침. So if you want to make this into something, let's do something, then we say 먹읍시다. 먹읍시다. So we just get rid of 다 and then just add 읍시다 to 먹, which is 먹읍시다. And next one is very similar. 읽다. 읽다 is to read. So 읽다 ends with 기억. 리을 기억 받침, which is a consonant. So it would turn into 읽읍시다. 읽읍시다. So these are two different uh, methods that we can uh, use it either with adding to uh, as a 받침 and add 시다 or 읍, or 읍시다 when it already ends with a consonant because we cannot add another consonant in there, right? Okay. And then it can be used in many different examples. Uh, when you want to eat, they say 먹읍시다. When you want to play, 밖에 나가서 놉시다. And if you want to, if you're hungry, uh, you can say 어, 우리 먹읍시다. Or, or did I already use the example? I'm not sure. Uh, so if you get bored of something, you can say 우리 새로운 거 합시다. Uh, so 합시다 is something to do. Okay. So we can give a lot of suggestions using this. Let's do something. Uh, it's a very simple thing. Just always know that there's two situations. If the stem ends in consonants, then we do 읍시다. If it ends with a vowel, you add 비읍 as a 받침 to the stem. And then we uh, say 시다 at the end. And this is MC Chair Kim, and I hope this is helpful. And see you next time. Bye bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, this is Teacher Kim Hobin here, and we'll be talking about ayo and oyo. You probably heard a lot of people say ayo, oyo at the end of the sentences when speaking Korean. And you might be wondering, why is there so much ayo and oyo? What does ayo and oyo even mean in the, in the first place? Uh, so in Korean honorific expression, the predicate of a sentence has a different ending to show the relationship between the speaker and the listener. Okay. And so what do I mean by it? So ayo and oyo in the first place is a polite informal uh, phrase or used in informal, polite informal phrases. Uh, meaning that when you're talking to people who are close to you, such as family member or uh, somebody who you're close to, but you still need to respect them in certain ways, then you use ayo and oyo, which is a polite, uh, informal expression. Okay, now we usually use it because the other person has a higher societal rank than you or older than you, but you're close to them. So that's why you still have to respect them by using the, the polite, informal expression. And one of the examples that you hear often is when you ask somebody what they're doing. Let's say if some friend was to ask, oh, Hey teacher, Kim, what are you doing? I, uh, I can say, if I'm reading a book, uh, I can say, oh, 저는 지금 책을 읽어요. Okay, 읽어요. Ends with 어요, right? And then another example can be, uh, Hey teacher, Kim, uh, what are you going to do for lunchtime? Uh, and I can say, 저는 점심 먹어요. So I'm eating lunch. Um, and it ends with oyo, okay? And then oyo and ayo uh, is put after either a verb or adjective. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. But before that, we need to look at this example about the stem and the endings. So the basic form of every Korean verb and adjective ends in ta ending. And then ta is omitted from the verb and the remaining part is called stem. For example, salda is a original form of to live. Okay. And we can convert this to sal ayo by removing the ending to a new ending of ayo. And then another example can be mokta, which is to eat. And then mok is a stem and ta is an ending, right? And we gotta replace the ending. But for this time, instead of ending, instead of replacing it to ayo, we replace it with 
oil. And the reason is there's two rules to oil and oil. So when do we use oil and when do you use oil? After. So when we use oil, when it comes after stem ending in a vowel of a, ya, or o, yo. And then oil comes after stems ending in a every vowel except a and o. So let's look at a couple examples of ayo. Okay. So tada can be converted into kayo because the stem ends in a vowel of a. And number two is oda can be converted into wayo because for this one we add ayo to o and then ending so it becomes wayo. And then poda becomes payo as the same logic for the one above. And manta to manayo because the stem ends in a vowel of a. But the words that end with oyo is if it ends in a vowel except a and o. So for example, mokta will become mok oyo because it doesn't end with a vowel of a or o. And after that, ipta, you get rid of ta and then it's ip oyo, ip oyo. And next one is chemi ita. And then you can convert this to chemi is soyo. So we basically replace all the ta's and replace it with oyo or ayo. And then ita to ilgoyo. And it can also be in a question format. For example, kada is to go, right? And but if you want to ask a, a question, you can convert it to kayo. And then it would be ayo because the stems end in a vowel of a. So a and oyo is important to show the predicate of a sentence to show relationship between the speaker and the listener. And then we convert this a lot because when we're speaking uh, Korean, we do not keep the verb and adjective in the pure Korean format of which ends in ta. We always convert it into different predicates. Okay, So that's why it's important to convert to oyo and ayo. Uh, and there's even more a polite way, which I'll make another video of you later. But if you know this for now as a basic, then you're set to go uh, as a beginner level. And then as you get into intermediate and advanced, and you will also learn different predicates on how to convert the Korean adjectives and verbs into different formats, depending on who you're talking to. And this is me, Teacher Kim, and I hope this was helpful. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Teacher Kim. Subscribe and like. Hello, Oxender. This is Teacher Kim Hobani, and today we'll be learning about something very important, which is something that we do in every language learning video that we have done so far. And today we'll be learning, finally learning about something regarding directions or places. Okay, so we are gonna learn about something called onu, onu, which means where. Okay, so you might have heard about this word or not. So onu usually comes before the noun uh, or object of a sentence and it can refer to a certain group, okay? And then we usually most always use this when we're asking somebody for a certain uh, person or certain thing, okay? And then uh, to where they belong to, okay? So let's look at the example. So onu comes before a noun and designates one thing of a group. And we, as I said, we use this word for asking about a special thing or person. Okay, so for example, if you want to say, which department store do you go? You say, 어느 백화점에 가요? 어느 백화점에 가요? So it always comes before the noun, which is 백화점. So if, you wanna, if you're curious about which 백화점 that person go to, we can say, 어느 백화점에 가요? And the next one is, 어느 학교에 가요? Which is, which school do you go to? Which school do you go to? 어느 대학교에 가요? Which uh, college do you go to? 어느 초등학교에 가요? Which elementary school do you go to? Okay. And then uh, in a lot of K-pop dramas, if it also involves a lot of countryside, uh, and then they can and they can say 어느 누구 놈의 어느 어느 집에서 왔노, which is kind of like a 사투리, which is a uh, in Chinese Fangyan and English dialect. Um, and then so 어느 can all, always mean uh, if you're curious about where the person is from or where uh, that person or that thing belongs to, you can say 어느. Okay. And this is from teacher Kim, and hope this was helpful. And you can always, always use this before using a, a the noun or object in a sentence uh, to figure out uh, where or what that specific thing is. Okay. And this is me, teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, students. Teacher 
Kim Hobin here, and today we'll be learning about something very important as I always say in any other language tutorial videos. Uh, so today is also very important, that's all I want to just reiterate. Um, and then it's to say, then, then, okay, which means, 그러면, 그러면, in Korean. Okay, so why is it important that we learn this, uh, 그러면, then, lesson? Because, uh, for example, if I was to suggest somebody, hey, let's eat cup noodle, because I love eating cup noodle. 우리 cup 라면 먹을래요? And if, but if that person says, uh, no, 아니요, 컵 라면 안 좋아요. They don't like cup noodle, okay? So what do you do? Do you just end your suggestion there and do you sacrifice what you want? No, you have to go for another shot because life is all about second chances and third chances, right? Okay. And but it's as long as we learn from our mistakes. Okay. So I don't know if this related at all. Uh, however, so you don't want to give up if that person doesn't like it, right? So you want to give another suggestion. So when you want to give another suggestion after you're failing the first one, you want to use then, right? Then do you want to eat sweet potato? Then you can say 그러면 고구마 먹을래요? And hopefully the other person will say yes. Okay, if the other person doesn't say it, don't talk to the person, it's not your friend. Okay. So we'll look at a couple of examples right now. Okay. So first one is 매운 거 먹어봤어? Which means did you eat spicy? Did you eat something spicy? And the other person says, 아니, no. And then this person says, then let's go eat this time. 그러면 이번에 먹으러 가자. Okay. And another example is, 나 늦었어. Which means I'm late. And then and another person can say, 그럼 택시 타자. Then let's grab taxi. Okay. So then is used a lot in many different situational uh, and conversational Koreans. Um, and it's, it's good to have this definition or this word in your mind because it can be used very simply as 그러면. It's, it's, it's nothing like a grammar or structure that you gotta memorize. It's just then, okay? So you usually put 그러면 in the beginning of the sentence, most of the time. But you can also put it in the middle just as how you can put then in English sentences as well. Uh, but most of the time it comes in the beginning uh, to suggest something, a, a different situation than what you already proposed. Okay, so 그러면 is then. Okay, so I can say, uh, Teacher, can video uh, 좋아하세요? Uh, and uh, that means, uh, do you like Teacher Kim's video? And the other person says, Oh, 너무 좋아요. 한국 뭐 언어에 대해서 배울 수도 있고 문화에 대해서 배울 수 있어서 너무 좋은 거 같아요. Which means, uh, like, why is um, because I learned a lot of Korean about Korean culture, Korean languages. I think it's it's really good. And I can say, oh, 그러면 이런 다른 비디오도 보세요. Which means, uh, then you should look at also these other videos that are just for fun that may not be related to Korean languages. And the person says, wow, this is so cool. Like, wow, 이거 진짜 재밌는 거 같아요. Okay, so 그러면 can be used a lot. That's what I want to say. And this is Teacher Kim. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, Alexander. This is Teacher Kim Hobani, and welcome back to another language lesson, a short language lesson, which will hopefully be less than a couple, three, four minutes. So, not to take too much time of your day, you can use this for the rest of your life. Okay, so what are we gonna learn today? We're gonna learn about Yeo and Yeo. Yeo, Yeo. Okay, so what does Yeo Yeo mean in the first place? If you understand Korean, if you heard a lot of Korean, or if you even heard some Korean before, you probably heard people say yeo yeo a lot. Because it means to be, okay? In any language, the probably one of the most common phrases people will say is something to be. To be or not to be. To live or to die. Um, and then the, when I was in the States, I actually saw a uh, car play because in America, I'm pretty sure as well as many different places all around the world, many car plates have a different like model or slogan depending on which state or which country they're from. And then New Hampshire is uh, to, it's like a live free or die. Okay, because it's also right next to Connecticut, which is constitution state. And orange is like a, no not orange, floral, Florida, I think Florida slogan is like Orange County. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I forgot. It's, it's been quite a long time since I was in the States. Okay, uh, so to be, okay. 
So here where you identify the predicate of a sentence with the subject. Okay, so let's let's get into the examples right away. So we use EAO if it comes after noun ending in a consonant. And we use EAO if the noun ending in a vowel. Okay. So for example, 책상이에요. 책상이에요. So 책상 is a noun, right? And 책상, 상 ends in a consonant, right? That's why we add EAO. It is a desk. 책상이에요. 연필 is a pencil. And pil also ends with a consonant of liel, pachim. So we also add eo. It is a pencil. But the next one is different. Okay, next one, uyu, u ends in a vowel. So that's why we only add eo. Okay, so uyu eo. And the last one, orma eo, orma eo, which is how much it is. So orma, ma ends with vowel, so that's why it ends with yeah. Okay, so it just shows that it doesn't always need to be to be, but it can also be in you know, a question form instead of declarative format. Okay, so this this phrase is used very very often, especially for uh, uh, people of young age because they're just learning about what's in this world and what the object is, uh, and. Uh, let's say if some kid came up and they never seen this red cushion before and then they ask me, Oh teacher Kim, oh you go uh so teacher Kim, what is this? And I can say, uh egos and bagan cushion yeo, which is this is red cushion. Okay. Uh, and then if they never seen a a uh, red slipper before, they can say, hey, teacher Kim, you go boyo, and I can say, Egon and Bagan uh Slepa, slepa, which is a slipper in a Korean way of saying it. Slepa, eo. Okay, and then so just just know that don't get confused of when to use uh, eo, eo, and eo. Just know that if it, the noun ends with a consonant, there's always eo. If it ends with a vowel, it's eo. Okay, and use very often just when you look at any object or anything outside inside your house, and, and you can say, oh, this is TV, eo. This is uh, 하얀 벽이에요 or, or many different examples like that okay and this is from teacher Kim and see you next time bye bye teacher Kim subscribe and like hello Alexandra this is teacher Kim Hobani and today we'll be learning about something very important as I always say in every video I mean make of related to language is 의세요 or 세요 okay so there's two different ways of saying it and I'll show you guys how we can say it uh, in just a couple seconds so what does 의세요 or 세요 even mean? it means uh, when you want to suggest somebody to do something in a polite way okay so they don't necessarily need to do it but just basically you're just telling them hey like you could do this you know like you, you can do this um, so it's, it's not it's not as uh, oppressive or forceful at all so it's a very polite way Okay, so a lot of Koreans use this all the time. Okay, so one of the examples is that in Korean K-pop dramas, if it's something like very serious K-pop drama, and let's say there's this like really wealthy like a family, uh, and then like the guys from the really wealthy family as well as all the K-pop dramas, and the girls are always like of course very poor, uh, and then. Um, uh, the girl gets invited by like the really rich families like home without the letting the, the boyfriend know uh, and then the girl like walks into um, the really wealthy like mansion that the boyfriends actually live boyfriend actually lives uh, and then the, the maid comes out and then maid maid will be like hey so this is like this is the, the poor girlfriend who loves a boyfriend and then so so just the girlfriend knocks it's like oh like I think I and then the maid will be mm. Yogi Anjoso Shiseo or Yogi Anjiseo. Okay, which means uh, hey please sit down here or hey please rest here. Okay, so while they bring some tea or something, right? So so just to give you a suggestion in a very polite way. So let's look at the actual rules of how we differentiate between when we use seo compared to useo. Okay. Um so again it means when you give order or suggestion in a polite form and then Seo comes after verb stems 
ending in a vowel. And this hail comes after verb stems ending in a consonant. So what do I mean by stems and endings? If you haven't looked at my other videos, just to do a quick review, all the Korean verbs and adjectives end with da that's in a pure format. But when we speak, we always convert it in different ways depending on what the situation and the predicate is. Okay. So the stem basically is, uh, let's say, uh, if you were to say 살다, which is to live, 살 would be the stem and 다 is the ending. So if it ends with 다, it's always the ending. Okay. So 읽으세요 would be 읽다, which is to read. And then we just convert 다 to 읽으세요 because 읽, which is stem, it ends in uh, a consonant, which is 기억, it's a pachin form, right? So it would be 읽다 to 읽으세요 So 다 would be just converted to 읽으세요 because that's the ending, right? So we always switch the ending, never switch the stems And then 쉬다, which is to rest, to 쉬세요 Okay, so 다 to 세요 For this one, it's not 읽으세요 because that's a 쉬, which is the stem end in a vowel or consonant it ends in a vowel, so that's why we only convert it to seo, not e seo. And then the last one is chu seo. So chu da is to give, and chu seo um, is also please give. Okay. So for this one, the ending would convert from ta to seo because chu ends with a vowel, so only seo. Okay. So we learned about how to give suggestion politely. Uh, to someone in Korean and we can always use it uh, when you meet for the first time and when you invite somebody to your house uh, and you can say oh 여기 앉으세요 oh 여기 oh, 여기서 쉬세요 이거 차 드실래요 or 차 마실래요 which is to drink water 아니면 이 과자 먹으실래요 so we, we learn about how to give us suggestions and you can always uh, use this when you invite other Koreans to your place and uh, 여기 앉으세요, 여기 쓰세요, 이거 드세요, 이거 먹으세요 um, to, to, to make them more comfortable and uh, more fitting into the house, right? Okay. And this has been Teacher Kim and I hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye bye! Teacher Kim! Subscribe and like! Hello, I'm the Teacher Kim Hobani and today, and today we'll be talking about something very important, as I always say in the introduction of the Korean elementary materials, is we'll be learning about something very important. Because I'm alliterating, I'm saying it to you twice because it's that important. Probably one of the most important lessons that I'm teaching so far is how to say yes and no in Korean. Okay. Because as a person, we need to express how we feel, right? If we don't like something, we gotta say no. If you feel like something, we say yes. Okay, so how to say yes and no in Korean. And it might be very simple. You might know it as 네, 아니요 as a polite form. And, or it can be 어 or 아니 as yes and no in an informal way when we're talking to a friend or someone casually. Okay, but we'll learn about uh, a, a polite way which is 네, 아니요 because it's always, too, it's always safe to learn a polite way because you don't want to offend anybody. So, 네, 아니요. Okay. So, is the lesson already over? 네 is yes, 아니요 is no. And is this it? No. Okay. So, it's actually very tricky because 네 and 아니요 doesn't necessarily mean yes and no. Okay. So, what do I mean by it? I'll give you a little episode when I was learning English uh, of why I was so confused to understand yes and no in English uh, from a Korean teacher. That I had was teaching English. Okay, uh, so for example, uh, yes and no still means the same thing in Korean if you're just asking regular questions. For example, uh, if I were to say, uh, 마시는 거 좋아하세요? which is, do you like to drink water? Uh, if I want to say yes, I can say 네. And if I say no, I, 아니요, 안 좋아해요. Okay, uh, and it would be as simple as that, right? But I'll throw a curve trick called curve ball. Okay, whatever that is. Um, it is if somebody say, "Do you not like to drink water?" Okay, which is which can be also be a rhetorical question. 
to uh, to say something if I didn't drink water and the person was just curious if I didn't like it. And in that way, I cannot say ne anio in an English way. Okay, so uh, 혹시 물 마시는 거안 좋아하세요? Okay, which is do you not like to drink water? And if I was to if I was to say uh, if I was to agree to say I don't like drinking water in English, I would say no, I don't like drinking water. And but if I like to drink water in that situation, I would say yes, I like to drink water. However, in Korean, it would be the opposite way. It would be uh, 네, 안 좋아해요. Yes, I don't like it. No, I like it. Do you understand? So yes and no, 네, 아니요 doesn't necessarily mean yes and no in Korean. It always means that's right. I agree with what you're saying. And 아니요 is I don't agree with what you're saying. That's not right. Okay. So if you just understand 네, 아니요 instead of not as yes and no, but instead of as something you agree to or something you don't agree to, uh, then it would be so much easier. Okay, so in all in casual situations, yes and no and ne anio is the same thing, but if somebody wants to ask you, uh, do you not like something? Do you not like to do blah blah blah? Uh, then the situation, the English way uh, would be flipped. Okay, so just uh, if somebody wants to ask you, do you not like to do something? Just always flip it and say uh, ne for no and anio for yes, which would be technically opposite. And this is actually sung by a Jiko. It goes like yes or no, blah blah blah. I'm not sure. I could be totally wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's a. Um, it's important to say yes and no whenever you go travel to Korea when you're with a Korean person. And make sure you don't confuse that person. Uh, because if, let's say if you're allergic to something and if they ask you, hey, do you not want me to put it in? And if you say, uh, uh, yes, uh, they don't want you to put it in, but you said it in a totally different way The opposite way, I mean, and that person put it in and it could be end of your life, which nobody wants, right? So it's important to know how to say yes and no in Korean And this is from Teacher Kim, and see you next time, bye-bye Teacher Kim, subscribe and like Hello, Alexander, this is Teacher Kim Hobini, and today we'll be talking about Ul and l because a lot of people are, are confused what ul and l is even used for and what its functions are and how to differentiate when to use ul and l. So we'll talk about those things today, okay? So but before let's talk about what ul and l is, okay? It's used as object particle. What is object particle? Object particle is when in Korean sentences it's usually formed an SOV. Subject, object, and verb, right? But between object and verb, there needs to be something called object particle to connect them together. So that's why we either use er and le. Okay, so let's look at the examples right away. We use er if it comes after a noun ending in a consonant. And we use le if it comes after nouns ending in a vowel. Okay, for example, 바지를 입어요, which means I'm wearing pants. 바지 is a noun that ends in a vowel, right? So G E E. So it ends with E. Uh, so E is a vowel. And so after the Paji, which is the article, it should come to the, which is the object particle. And E boyo is to wear. Okay, next example is Paber Moko Isoyo. I am eating. Okay. So Pab is the object and Moko Isoyo is a verb, right? And how can we connect them together? We use E because Pab ends with a consonant. Pib is a pachimpu. Okay. The next one is 잠을 자고 있어요. 잠 is an object. 자고 있어요 is a verb. Okay. So between it, it needs to be 을 because 잠 ends with a consonant, with a miem as a pachim. Okay. And then it's very simple. It's just uh, 을, uh, we use 을 if a noun ends in a consonant and 를 if it ends in a vowel, very simple, okay? And then if you get really used to it, a lot of Koreans, we don't even know, uh, we don't even know these rules specifically, but we know by our heart because it doesn't sound well if we use ul and lul for different, uh, ones with different vowels and different consonants, okay? So once you get used to it, you won't even need to think about this at all because it'll just be ingrained into your brain and it'll just sound more natural and you'll know which one to use right away without really thinking about it, okay? Um, and then to be honest, a lot of times object particles don't really need to be used in, 
chosen or be used. Uh, of course, uh, it should be used in very formal Korean, but in everyday language, uh, a lot of times people don't really use object particles and people can still understand. Okay? But however, it, it doesn't mean it's bad to use them at all. Right? And this is my teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye bye! Teacher Kim! Subscribe and like. Hello, Alexander, this is teacher Kim over here, and today we'll be learning something negative. Okay, and what do I mean by negative? It doesn't mean that we're gonna learn something bad or depressing, but we're gonna learn something, how to say uh, something that negates that thing. Something that basically means, no, I don't like it. No, I don't wanna do something. No, it doesn't taste good. Okay, so, an, an is basically not in Korean. Okay, and we use that before verbs and ad adjectives. So it prefixes verbs and adjectives and it denotes a negation. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples of what I mean by it. Okay, so if I want to say I don't like candy, I can say candy an joaheo. Okay, so if you just take out an from there, candy joaheo, it means I like candy. But if you put an before joaheo, that it means an joaheo, which is I don't like. Okay, and next one is e osen an bisayo, which means this clothes is not expensive. Okay. But if I take out an in the sentence and say e osen bisayo, it means this clothes is expensive. So if you put it before the verbs or adjective, it basically uh, denotes negative. Okay, it denotes the opposite thing. And the last one is 저는 지금 안 자요. 저는 지금 안 자요, which means I am not sleeping right now. Okay. Um, and maybe you can text this to a person of your crush saying that hey, I'm not sleeping right now Yeah, you can text me or something, you know, whatever whatever you want to do in your free time You can use this uh, negation. Okay, uh, so and you just put it before the verb and adjectives to, uh, to Prove the negation um, And yeah, it's simple as that and if you just take out the an negation, it just means the opposite thing Okay, and you can put it all the time so example, if you don't like something, you can say 안 좋아해요, okay, which is I don't like. If you say 좋아해요, which means you like it. Okay. So in life, I feel as uh, you shouldn't always say yes to things. You shouldn't always try to please others. It's okay to have, be firm on your own belief and say things that you don't like because that's how you feel, right? You don't want to be uh, converted into what the society want you to be. You want to be your own. You want to study. Korean using Teacher Kim's channel, and hopefully this is helping you. And this is Teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Teacher Kim. Subscribe and like. Hello, Alexander. This is Teacher Kim Hobani, and today we'll be learning about how to use Hago. Okay, so what is Hago? Okay, it sounds almost, sounds like Hugo Boss, that brand, but it's not. Okay, nothing to do with brand. Hago is probably one of the most used Korean words of all time because it means and. And why is it that we use hago a lot? It's just not us Koreans, but all, all, all the people from all over the world use this and every day, okay? Because humans are greedy. We want many things. No, I'm just kidding, okay? No, because and we, we I, I guess there's a, if there's a lot of requirements uh, in what you want, or if you want to specify more things, now of course we have to say and. We cannot just say, uh, keep things going on. People are gonna confuse of uh, all the things that they said. They might think two things are one thing, right? So, hago is end. Okay, it's a conjunctive particle. So let's look at a couple examples of when we use end in a sentence. Okay. okay. Oh, and just notice uh, that when I say hago, there's probably no pause between the different nouns that I say hago. Okay. So for example, if I wanna say, give me chicken and beer, please. Chicken hago mekju juseyo. Okay, so there's really no pause uh, before hago at all. Okay, chicken hago mekju juseyo. Please give me chicken and beer, which in Korea we call that chimek. So if you look at my uh, other playlist of slangs, you can learn that what chimek is, which is chicken and beer, which is a, one of the perfect combinations you can ever have in life. Okay. And second is 삼겹살 하고 소주 주세요. Give me pork belly and soju, please. 삼겹살 하고 소주 주세요. Okay, so these are all situations when you're at a restaurant when you're ordering at the waiter. Okay, and the next one is 맥주 하고 소주 주세요. Give me beer and soju, please. 
Mac drew his beard. So drew his soldier. Okay, so I don't know if you guys noticed, but all these three examples have to do with the perfect combinations. Okay, if you if you ever try beer and soju, pork belly and soju, chicken and beer, I don't know why they all have to do with alcohol. So if you are of age and uh, you want to try them on, it'll be heavenly. Try them in Korea because I don't know if if you try this anywhere else. In Korea, it's just, it's I don't know if it's a chemical compound within them that makes it so good, but it's it's very good. Okay, so hago can be used very often, other than when you're at a restaurant. Hago can be uh, when when somebody's giving you an older teacher is giving you, okay, uh, you can do this assignment, uh, hago dano assignment, hago dano assignment, hago dano assignment, hago. So a lot of assignments. So it, hago is just basically and. So use it between two nouns or two things that you want it to be between and, uh, and then there you have it. Okay, so this is my teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful. And and hago you'll use it uh, a lot actually. So hopefully this is helpful. And this is my teacher Kim. Bye bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Hello, Alexander. This is teacher Kim over here. Today we'll be learning about something also very important, which is eso or e. But we'll mostly be using eso, which is more used. Okay. And then when do we use eso? Eso is a located particle to explain where the object or where the subject is located in. Okay. So it in English uh, usage it will be used as in or at. Okay. So let's look at the examples right away. Okay. So Eso, as I said, is a located particle and it specifies the location of a specific activity that is happening. Okay, so for example, if I want to say, I study at a school, and as you guys already know, Korean structure is not the same as an English sentence structure. Uh, Korean structure is SOV, subject, object, and verb. So, 학교에서 공부하고 있어요. 학교에서, which is a school, 공부하고 있어요 is to study. So, 학교 is the object, so we usually put uh, 에서 after the object. So, 학교에서 공부하고 있어요. So, if the question format is uh, uh, 공부하고 있어, 어디서 공부하고 있어? And you can say 학교에서 공부하고 있어요. And next one is 회사에서 일하고 있어요. I work at a company. 회사 is a company and 일하고 있어요 is to work. And so, 에서 is kind of like at company at work and next one is 집에서 놀고 있어요 I play at home okay which uh, in Korea a lot of people despise them for just doing nothing and staying home but you know like you can't you can hate on them it's the uh, it's the it's the maybe society's problem for creating a lot of people that is just not employed okay uh, and the next one is uh, 집에서 만날래요 which is do you want to meet at home Okay, so chip is home, manaleo is meet, and eso is just at. So let's uh, meet at home. Do you want to meet at home? Okay, so eso uh, can be used in many different examples other than the one I just uh, said. Um, and uh, it can be because in a lot of uh, conversations, uh, of course, the locations or where some actions or what you want to say is very important because if you want to say some funny story or interesting or some something very important story in Korean, and if you want to mention that all this thing has happened in some different country, you have to say oh, 뭐, 어, 발리에서 어, 뭐가 일어났어. And there's a really famous uh, Korean drama that was filmed about like 10, 15 years ago, or oh, is it almost 20? I forgot. I think it's 15. 발리에서 생긴 일, which is uh, with Seo Ji Seo. A very famous actor, um, and then yeah, so it's a little when we're speaking the location of where the action is happening very important because let's say some angry person, let's say uh, you're underage and your your mom or your dad say like hey, like don't you what do you need? And then and then if you don't want to make them upset, and you can say oh, 저는 어, 지금 도서관에 어, 서 공부하고 있어요, which is I'm studying at library right now. So to satisfy them, even if it's false, it's a white lie, right? Okay, so look again, eso is this uh, located particle which explains in, at, where the specific activity is happening. Okay, we always put it after, now, or a specific place. Okay, and this is my teacher Kim, and hope this was helpful. And see you next time. Bye bye. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like.
Hey Lux and there is the teacher Kim Hobani and today we'll be talking about a possessive article that can be omitted in Korean sentences for easier pronunciation. Okay, because Korean if you as you guys realize has totally different pronunciation compared to English because we have something called enunciations which needs to be emphasized but be also smoothed out to be considered fluent native in Korean. Okay. And to acquire that, of course in Korean language we don't want a lot of uh, unnecessary uh, hard pronouncing things in the middle of sentences and that's for that reason for possessive articles such as a is usually omitted okay so for example if i want to say um that is bad car i can say uh, 차입니다. Okay? Uh, which is uh that car is my dad's car okay but you don't need to say 아버지의. Okay, you can say 저 차는 아버지 차입니다. Okay, so 의 is not very uh, important, necessary, and in fact, a lot of Koreans don't really use it in the first place. Okay, and let's change it to some different topic. Okay, so like when we say kimchi is very famous in Korea, it's very delicious. We always have to have it at least once per day, at least for me. Uh, even when I'm abroad, I try to buy kimchi uh, and then store it without making it smell too bad for other people. Uh, and for uh, then if I want to say that kimchi is my mom's kimchi, I can say 저 김치는 저희 어머니의 김치입니다. I can say that, okay, 어머니의, which is my mom's kimchi, okay. But I don't even really need to put 의, okay. I can say 저 김치는 어머니 김치입니다. 어머니가 해준 김치입니다. So 의 is not very necessary. And if, you wanna, if I want to talk about somebody instead of third person, instead of third person and talk about me, I can say now, if I say this is cushion, right? I can say nai cushion, nai cushion, okay? And but a lot of times nai is converted to ne, ne, okay? Um, and then for the, uh, the second perspective, second person, which is you, is ni, ni, okay? But a lot of times, because we know what the subject is, a lot of subject is omitted in the first place, we can just say cushion. I don't, I don't need to say ne cushion or nine cushion. Okay, so a lot of possessive articles in Korean are are actually uh, omitted, and it doesn't really need to be mentioned unless it needs to be specifically mentioned for the purpose of a sentence. And of course, it needs to be mentioned. But but always subject uh, is omitted. Possessive article is omitted because we already know uh, what uh, what that specific object is uh, part of or who possesses possesses. It, okay, and. Uh, yeah, and this has been the reason of why the early, the positive article is omitted a lot. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. And hopefully you don't, you can of course put early, okay, nobody's gonna just say, hey, stop using early. Uh, but it's, you just gotta learn that it doesn't need to be used if you don't want to. And this is Teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, it's -bye. is Teacher Kim Hobanyan. And today we'll be learning about how to translate your name into Korean, okay, because I'm in, Part of many multiple Facebook groups as well as Kakao groups and on YouTube and people always ask hey anybody can anybody translate their name into Korean okay and then every time that they do that I was wondering oh what happens if there's a video that helps them uh, translate the language by themselves and I was thinking okay today's the day so I'll be teaching you guys two main ways you can translate your names into Korean. Okay. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Okay, number one way is literal translation, which there's a total of 11 steps that you have to do. And then the other one is actually very simple, which is just forget about how your name is in your country or in your language, but just actually come up with a whole new Korean one, which some people actually do, inspired from a K drama, K pop idol or some Korean person that they've seen that they really like the name of. So for sort of example, I know some people named Minho uh, because of Lee Minho, and I know some people named Yongjun after Bae Yongjun, okay? But that, that's an easy one, and I'm not gonna, because for me, I like if you look at somebody, you can say, oh, that person's like that name, that person's that name. So I personally don't know who's watching this video, so I cannot give you uh, these random Korean names because these are all the random Korean names like just as English, you can say, oh, that person looks like his name is David or that person looks like his name is uh, Justin. Um, 
like the, the, the all these names and characteristics uh, so it's really ultimately up to you which Korean name fits you the best but if you want to literally translate your name into Korean uh, this video I'll give you guys 11 steps and then you have to go through all these 11 steps to make sure your name fits all these 11 categories then your name is finalized let's go with number one first okay number one is the most basic one which is there should be at least one consonant and one vowel in each syllable okay meaning that if your uh, name is Anna in English then it should be Anna 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 so uh, or or any any source okay there's no perfect uh, one way to translate into your name but you just have to follow this rule that there at least every syllable there needs to be at least one consonant and one a vowel to at least make a, a soundable. And number two is R at the end is silent. So for example, uh, if your name is uh, Murder, um, then uh, your Korean name would be Moto or Mato. Okay, so R is just ignored. H and the end of the syllable is silent, just as in English. Like for example, Hana, Hana. Okay, the H at the end is not even pronounced in English, so it's also the same in Korean. It should be Hana or Hanna or, or any, any way you want to go at it, but the H is silent at the end. And the ace, uh, number four is SH at the end of your word either becomes she or she. Okay, so meaning that if your name is Josh in Korean, it can be Cha Shi or Cha Shi. And then the P, and number five is if your syllable ends with P or PH, it either ends with P or P. For example, if your name is Philip, in Korean it can be Philip or Philip. And then if, the, if your name, one of the syllables ends with T, then it can be either translated with Shiot as a Patim, as a Patim, or T. So, example, if your name is Nat, your Korean name can be net or net to. And then number seven is if your name is F in it, then it's translated into P. Okay, so if your uh, name is Francesca uh, in English, in Korean it can be Francesca because in Korean we don't have a F sound, so we always translate into P sound. And number eight is a V. V is pronounced as B because in Korean we don't have a V sound. Okay, so if your name is uh, Victor, then in Korean it can be Victor, Victor. And then number nine is if your name has Z in it, then it's pronounced J in Korean because we also don't have a Z sound or J sound. Okay, so if your name is Zuckerberg, then um, in Korean it can be Chakobog. And number 10 is a little tricky. If you have an L sound followed by the vowel, then your name in Korean should become lir plus lir plus vowel. So what I mean by it is if your name is Salila, Salila, then in Korean it can be Sel Lil La. Okay, with the A as a vowel. Last one is if your name ends with K, then you can either end with Kyok as a Pachim or K as an ending. Meaning that if your name is Derek, then in Korean it can be Derik or Derik. Okay, so these were some of the most common ones. So these are the 11 rules that you gotta see before you can translate into your own language. So let's actually look at what are the most common English uh, names and I can translate into Korean, okay? So I just want you to know that there's multiple ways you can translate it as long as it fits these 11 rules, okay? So let's see all the common English, Korean, English names. English name. So number one is James. In Korean, it can be Che Imse, Che Imse, and then it follows all the eleven rules. Okay. And number two is uh, David. David. It can be David. And number three can be Christopher. In Korean, it can be Christopher. Uh, Christopher. And number four is George, which is Joji, Joji. And number five is Ronald, it can be Ronald, Ronald. Okay. And then that's it 
for today and I hope you uh, find this video helpful and meaningful and let me know comment down below how you translated your English name into Korean okay and this is teacher Kim and see you next time bye bye hello to is teacher Kim Hobinia and today we'll be talking about asoyo and osoyo which is a past form of ayo and oyo so this is a past tense polite ending and it indicates something has happened in the past okay so let's get to the exercise right away Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So for example, 사요, which means to buy, can turn into 사서요. 사서요, which means bought. Okay. And the one bottom is 와요, which means come, and 왔어요 means came. And one on the bottom is 봐요, which means to see, can turn into 봤어요 as a past form, which means saw. And then bottom one, 살아요 to 살았어요 And 많아요 to 많았어요 And 먹어요 to 먹었어요 씻어요 to 씻었어요 멀어요 to 멀었어요 읽어요 to 읽었어요 재미있어요 to 재미있었어요 And just know that the blue ones are the stems and then the red ones are the endings. So just know that the endings are the ones that changes with the variations to the stem. So what's today's lesson? Chemi sosoyo. And if you think it was fun, you can say Chemi sosoyo. And if you didn't think it was not fun, you can say Chemi opsosoyo or An Chemi sosoyo. Okay. Well, this has been Teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. This is Teacher Kim Hobenia. Today we'll be learning about something very important, which is 그래서. 그래서. 그래서 means therefore, and so it can be used to introduce a new phrase that's related to the phrase that's already said, that's already related. Okay, so let's get to examples right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. 어제 일을 많이 했어요. I did a lot of work yesterday. 그래서 피곤해요. Therefore, I am tired. Okay, so because this person worked a lot yesterday, therefore, I'm tired. Okay, so that makes sense. And next one is 사람들이 제 유튜브 비디오를 많이 봐요. People watch my YouTube videos often. 그래서 기뻐요. Therefore, I'm happy. True story of teacher Kim. Okay. The next one is 돈 많이 벌었어요. I earned a lot of money. 그래서 이제 행복해요. Therefore, I'm happy. Okay, if you earn a lot of money, then this person is happy. Okay, some people say money and happiness correlated. Some people say don't. But this is not very related to me. So let's just end this lesson right away and uh, yeah so 그래서 is very straightforward okay so just use it uh, as a therefore so in a Korean sentence to connect two ideas that are related to each other okay so something happened because something happened this happened cause and effect that's it and this is the teacher Kim and see you next time bye bye hello excellent this is teacher Kim Hobani and today we'll be talking about 했어요 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 means did okay and it's a past form of do right so it's past form of 해요. So 해요 can turn into 했어요 as a past tense and do can turn into 네 as a past tense. And then you usually say this when you did something in the past. So let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So the first one is 공부해요, which means to study. And it can turn into 공부했어요 as a past tense. And next one is 이야기해요, which means to talk, can turn into 이야기했어요, which means talked. The next one is 전화해요, can turn into 전화했어요, I called. 좋아해요, which means to like, can turn into 좋아했어요, which means I liked. Okay. Notice that blue ones are the stems and the red ones are the endings and endings are the ones that change okay so just know that for the red ones on the left of heyo turns into the right ones of hesoyo as a past tense so it's very simple to convert uh the present tense into past tense of what you do right now to what you did okay well this is in teacher kim and i hope this was helpful and see you next time bye bye hello center this is teacher kim hobani and today we'll be talking about 그리고 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 doesn't really sound 
Korean, right? Grigo. Grigo. It sounds something like Italian or I'm not sure. Some some European Western language. But Grigo means N. Okay. Korean has a lot of N's, and this is uh, one of the uh, alternates of N that you will find. Okay. But a lot of Grigos is used in the beginning of a sentence, and we can look at the examples right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So N is typically used to introduce a sentence. For example. 청소를 했어요. 그리고 빨래를 했어요. I cleaned and did laundry. Okay, sounds like me every day. And next one is 어머니는 부엌에서 일을 해요. Mom is working in a kitchen. 그리고 아기는 자요. And the baby is sleeping. And next one is 커피, 빵, 그리고 물 주세요. Give me coffee, bread, and water. So these are straightforward. Okay, so you use a lot of uh, 그리고's between the sentences to connect them uh, if A and B is connected to each other. But uh, but 그리고 doesn't always need to be at the start of a new sentence. It can also be in between as well. Just be aware of that and you'll be fine. And this is me, Teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Alexander, the Teacher Kim, who and today we'll be learning about 그런데. 그런데. Sounds like grande. Grande. When you, when you order grande size in Starbucks. Okay. But it doesn't have to do with anything of Starbucks. It has to do with but. By the way, okay, there's many different variations of but by the way, but today we'll be learning about 그런데. And let's look at the examples right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Newseo 오늘 비안 온다고 했어요. News said that it won't rain today. 그런데 밖에 비가 와요. But it is raining outside. Okay, so the news lied again. And the second one is 오늘 시험이 있어요. There is a test today. 그런데 but 공부를 못했어요. I couldn't study. Okay. So that's what a lot of uh, really smart people say when when you ask them, well, how did you prepare uh, your exams? Uh, and you say, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't. And then that smart person says, oh, I couldn't really prepare uh, anything. And that person usually gets hundred. Uh, and then last one is 내일 중요한 미팅이 있어요. There is an important meeting tomorrow. 그런데, but 잠이 안 와요. I cannot fall asleep. Okay, I said that a little weird at the end, but it just means 잠이 안 와요. I cannot fall asleep. So 그런데 is but by the way. So when something happens unexpected to your plan, so that's why you say this was supposed to happen, but this happened. So this is a teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, so this is teacher Kim Hobani, and today we'll be talking about something that it is not. Okay, when something it is, you can say ie. Okay, but when something is not, you can say e or ka anie. Okay, so when do we use e slash ka for anie? And then how do we use it in sentences? So let's look at examples right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So, e, ka, anieo is a negative form of noun plus ieo. Okay, and then we use e if it comes after noun ending in a consonant, and we use ka when it comes after nouns ending in a vowel. So, let's see what I mean by it. So, for the first example, hakseng i anieo. I am not a student. Because hakseng ended with consonant, that's why you say e anieo. And next one is 오늘 화요일이 아니에요. Today is not Tuesday. It also ends with a consonant for 화요일. That's why it has to be continued by e, not ka. But the next one is different. Next one is 사과가 아니에요. It is not an apple. But 사과 ends with a vowel. It ends with wa, right? So that's why it has to be continued by ka and then 아니에요. It is not an apple. And next one is 친구가 아니에요. Not a friend. He or she is not a friend. 친구가 아니에요. Okay, so you can say that when somebody is not your friend. Okay, so it's very simple. So you use e if it ends with a noun with a consonant, and then you use ka if it ends with nouns ending in vowels. And this is teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful. And see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. This is teacher Kim Hobini, and today we're talking about how to use nugu and nuga, and what's the difference? What's the difference between nugu and nuga? Okay. So first of all, they have to do with who. 
Okay, nugu and nuga both have to do it. Who? But the main difference is that nuga, which is basically nugu plus ka, is a subject particle. Meaning that you only use nuga in a sentence when nuga is used as a main subject, but you use nugu if it's the object. Okay, so let's look at the example right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So nugu is short for nugu plus ka, which is subject art particle, meaning it's a subject. Okay, so nugu is someone who, nuga also means someone who, but as a subject. So for example, if you want to say, whose cake is this? Which the cake is the main subject. And then they're asking who ate it. Okay. And the next one is who ate my cake? Who ate my cake? Which means Nuga de cake mogosayo. And in this instance, Nuga who is the main subject. So always know that when you need to put who as a subject, then you always put Nuga for something is Nuga de uh, cake mogosayo. Okay, who ate my cake? I'm wondering uh, who, who ate my cake. Okay. And then, but if you say, uh, uh, whose cake is this? Uh, the subject is the cake. I hope this was helpful, and then I'll see you next time. Bye bye. This is the teacher Kim. Hello, this is teacher Kim Hobinian. Today we'll be learning about hante, hante, which means to in English. Okay, so if you want to add, I gave this to someone or someone did this to me, then you use hante. Okay, in conversational Korean, we use hante a lot. But in a lot of written languages, ege is also often used as well. So let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So hante and ege two indicates direction towards persons and animals. But in conversation, hante is frequently used. Ege is rarely used for animals. So ege is used for humans mainly. Okay, so let's get to exercise. First one is I gave a letter to my friend 친구한테 편지를 보냈어요 The Korean sentence structure is SOV, subject, object, verb and the English is SVO, subject, verb, object so know that they haven't flipped friend to male gave Okay. And next one is I gave milk to the cat it will be 고양이한테 우유를 줬어요 So 고양이 cat is the subject Uyu milk is the object and Josuyu is verb gave. And the next one is 형한테 돈을 빌려줬어요, which means I lent money to my brother, which is something you have to be very uh, be careful of to lending money to anybody, even in your family. It can make it very awkward. So know that 한테 is used as a two in Korean. When we use it, I uh, usually put something or someone that you gave something to or you did something to in the front. So you can say uh, 내 친구한테, which is uh, my friend 친구한테 uh, 돈을 줬어요, which means I gave uh, money to my friend. Okay, so know that always in the beginning you put somebody who is receiving the action in the beginning and then to and then the object and verb. This is teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, this is teacher Kim, and today we will learn about something very important, which is 에서까지 and 부터까지. Okay, if you say fast, 에서까지, 부터까지, it sounds like a little bit of rap, but it doesn't have to do anything with rap. It has to do with from and to. Okay, we use 에서, blah, 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 까지, when we have to do with places, because 에 is the particle for area or place. And then, but 부터까지 has to do with what time to what time. Okay, so let's get to exercises right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. These means same, from, to. But we use 에서까지 for the concept of place and 부터까지 for the concept of time. So for example, if someone wants to ask a question, 집에서 학교까지, which means from home to school. 얼마나 걸려요? How long does it take? So it means how long does it take from home to school? And if it takes uh, about an hour, you can say 한 시간쯤 걸려요. And the next one is, what do you take from Seoul to Busan? 
because it has to do with place, we have to use 에서 and까지. So 서울에서 부산까지 뭘 타고 가요? And if you want to be fast, you can say uh, KTX 타고 가요. I take KTX. Okay, and then the last one is What did you do yesterday? 어제 뭘 했어요? And then because it's asking what did you do yesterday it has to do with time, so it has to use 부터까지 from to. So I clean from morning to lunch. 아침부터 점심까지 청소하고 오후에 친구를 만났어요. And I met with a friend in the afternoon. Okay, so you always know that 부터까지 it has to do with time, and 에서까지 has to do with places. Okay, and a lot of times. Uh, a lot of Koreans use this very naturally every day, so it's really important for you to get the grasp of esokaji, putokaji as soon as possible. So it's ingrained to your brain and you can use it naturally, whatever, whenever, whoever you want to use it. Well, this has been Teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Xander, this is Teacher Kim, and today I'll be talking about ilgeyo, which means I will do something. Okay, because in Korea, a lot of people want to do stuff. Okay, so if you say, uh, what are you going to do? What will you do? And you can say, what are you going to do? And such. And so let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim. Subscribe and like. 읽게요 and 겠어요 expresses a subject's intention. It is usually used with the first person in statements. So we use 읽게요 more often than 겠어요 in conversation. But you can say, you can still use 겠어요 in written language as well. So for example, if somebody says, I want to drink coffee, 커피를 마시고 싶어요. And then if you want to do something for that person, you can say, I will make it, which means, 내가 다 줄게요. 줄게요. And next one is, where should we meet? 어디서 만날까요? 어디서 만날까요? And then if you want to also do that person a favor, you can say, I will go there. Okay, meaning where that person is. And in Korean, that would mean 제가 그쪽으로 갈게요. 갈게요. And then next one is 체육복으로 갈아입으세요. Switch to gym clothes. And if you want to say, yes, I will change now, then you can say, 네, 지금 갈아입을게요. 네, 지금 갈아입을게요. It's a little weird that somebody's telling you to change into gym clothes, but I guess it makes sense because if it's at school, then you, you, the teacher tells you to do something and you do it. Okay, I'll change now. 네, 지금 갈아입을게요. Okay. So it's very simple. So you always add liu at the end uh, as a pachim and then keo. And always know that you use it with a verb uh, and then you just change the pachim of a stem and change the ending and then you can make it seem as you will do something as an intention. Okay. Well, this has been Teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, this is Teacher Kim Hobini and today we'll be talking about 하고 싶다. Okay. So what is 하고 싶다 or something 고 싶다? It means when you want to do something, you say this at the end. Okay, so let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So 고싶다 means want to do or would like to do. And the first example is 커서 뭐 하고 싶어요? 커서 뭘 하고 싶어요? What do you want to do when you grow up? And then if you want to be a scientist, then you say, I want to become a scientist. 박사가 되고 싶어요. 박사가 되고 싶어요. Okay. And next one is 지금 밥 먹고 싶어요. It means I want to eat right now. 지금 밥 먹고 싶어요. The next one is 시험에서 100점 받고 싶어요. I want to get 100 on a test. Okay. So these are all the things that uh, you want to do or would like something to happen. So you put something 고 싶어요. A lot of times you say 하고 싶어요. 어, 지금 밥 먹고 싶어요. Uh, or uh, 밖에 나가서 놀고 싶어요. Okay, so you usually put it uh, with the verb and ko and the 싶어요. Okay, well, this is my teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Xander. This is teacher Kim Hobini, and today we'll be learning about mot. So mot is a noun, is a nail. But if you use it before a verb in Korean sentences, then it becomes can't. So if you cannot do something, you can put mot in the beginning and put a verb indicating you cannot do this verb. Okay, so let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So mot means can't indicate impossibility. So if you can't speak Korean well, you can say 한국어 잘 
못 해요. And next one is I can't walk because my leg hurts. 다리가 아파서 which means my leg hurts because my leg hurts. 못 걸어가요. I can't walk. 밥못 먹어요. I can't eat. 시간 없어서 숙제 못 해요. I can't do homework because I have no time. Okay. So it's very simple. Just put it uh, before a verb that you have impossibility of doing or you cannot do, and you can express that you cannot do something like putting "mot" before a verb in Korean sentences. Well, this is my teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful, and see you next time. Bye. Hello, Kim. This is teacher Kim, and today we'll be learning about. 하고 있다 or 하고 있어요 which means you're indicating something that you're doing indicating an action that is still happening and continuing on right now as I speak okay so let's get to exercise right away teacher Kim subscribe and like so 고 있다 is to be doing the pattern of 고 있다 is used only with action verbs and indicates that an action is actually Progressing, so it's not something that has happened before and ended. It's not something that will happen in the future and won't happen right now. It's happening currently as I'm speaking right now. So, for example, 지금 학교에 가고 있어요. I'm going to school right now. Okay, so let's say if you're actually skipping from school and your mom calls you, Hey, teacher Kim, where are you going? What are you doing right now? And I can say, 지금 학교에 가고 있어요. I'm going to school right now. And the next one is, 지금 신문을 보고 있어요. I'm looking at newspaper right now. Okay, you're looking at a newspaper right now. 지금 밥 먹고 있어요. I am eating right now. Okay, so 고 있어요 is indicating that you're doing something right now. Okay, so just to maybe to reply to somebody, uh, if they ask you, hey, what are you doing? You can say something, something, 하고 있어요. Something, something, I'm doing something right now. Okay, so it's a very useful phrase if you want to express something that you're doing right now. Well, this has been Teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful. And see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Alexander, the teacher Kim Hobuni. And today we'll be learning about Ninde. Ninde. So, Ninde is often used a lot with Ita and Opta. So, Omninde, Inninde. And then it's usually used to introduce a sentence that follows it. So, let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim. Subscribe and like. If A person says, give me coffee please, coffee 주세요. B person, if there's no coffee, then you say, 커피 없는데, there's no coffee. 차 마실래요? Don't you want to drink tea? Okay, so because there's no coffee, he's asking, do you want to drink tea instead? Okay, so let's introduce a new idea because there's no coffee. Okay, let's get to the next exercise. 지금 혹시 여기 올수 있어요? Can you come here right now? And then B person says, 지금 집에 있는데, I'm at home. 가기 귀찮아요. I'm too lazy to go. And next one is, 한국에 언제 오세요? When do you come to Korea? And B person says, 내일 가는데, I'm coming tomorrow. 내일 같이 밥 먹을래요? Do you want to eat together tomorrow? So you use 는데 uh, to uh, introduce a sentence which follows it. Uh, because of something happened before, this is happening. So it can be kind of a linking phrase, linking word, and it can be almost similarly described as uh, because, because A happened, it's B happening. So you might use 는데, 없는데, 있는데. Okay. It's a little bit tricky because you gotta also add the stem of a verb to uh, make it a, make a connection. Uh, but once you get hang of it, it gets easier. So if you just look at the exercise again, this will be more helpful. Well, this has been Teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye. Hello, Sunday this is teacher Kim Hobani, and today we'll be talking about a also, which means so and then. And it is used as conjunctive ending and it is suffixed to a stem. We often use it when something A happens, and because A happens, you did B. And between A and B is a conjunctive particle which uh, can be used as so and then. So let's look at the examples right away. Teacher Kim. Subscribe and like. 어제 왜 병원에 갔어요? Why did you go to hospital yesterday? And B person says, I had a headache, so I went to hospital. 머리가 아파서 병원에 갔어요. And next one is, 왜 울어요? Why are you crying? 영화가 너무 슬퍼서 울어요. The movie is so sad, so I cry. Okay. So for this one, 슬퍼서 means so I cry. And next one is. 제가 지금 배가 많이 고파서 공부 못할 것 같아요. 
I'm very hungry right now, so I cannot study. 고파서 means hungry, so. So just know that so then is used as a conjunctive particle, conjunctive uh, ending between two different phrases that are connected to each other. So because A happened, B happened. The only tricking thing is uh, combining as and also uh, to the stem of a word. That's a little bit tricky and that's something that you have to get used to. And then as long as you get used to using as and also so and then between two different phrases, then you'll be all set to go. Well, this is my teacher Kim, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Sunday. This is teacher Kim Hobini, and today we'll be talking about will, which is 을 거예요. Okay, so we already learned a lesson of I will do something, which is 어 개요, 리을 개요, 할 개요, 어 리을 개요. So this is a little different because it's not something that I'm going to do, but I'm predicting or somebody's predicting this, predicting that something will happen. Okay, so let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So, 을 거예요 is a sentence ending used to indicate the speaker's conjecture or some possibility of something. It is contracted form of 을 것이에요. Okay, so the first example is 내일 비올 거예요. It will rain tomorrow. Next one is 친구가 사과를 잘 먹을 거예요. Friend will eat an apple well. And the last one is 집에 핸드폰이 있을 거예요. The cell phone will be at home. Okay. So it's just uh, predicting that something uh, will happen. And you usually put it at the end with something that's going to happen in the front. So if you think uh, it's going to rain outside, you can say 비올 거예요. Okay. Or if you think uh, a... Uh, Delivery is going to come very soon. You can say, uh, 택배 uh, 이제 곧올 거예요. Okay. So there's a lot of usage for 을 uh, 거예요. So make sure to memorize it, use it often, get it in your brain so it gets natural. And this is my teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful. And see you next time. Bye. Hello, this is the teacher Kim Hobini. And today we'll be talking about something that you should not do, which is 하지 마세요 or something 지 마세요. Okay, so a lot of times when you look at a wall or something that prohibits you from doing something, there's a sign that says, "Oh, 뭐 하지 마세요, 담배 피지 마세요, 버리 뭐 쓰레기 버리지 마세요." There's a lot of 지 마세요. So it's a very important lesson today. And let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So 지 마세요 is a negative form of. Is so it expresses prohibition or dissuasion. Okay. And then the first example is 여기서 담배 피우지 마세요. Don't smoke here. 시험 공부하지 마세요. 어차피 망했어요. Don't study for the test. It already has no hope. <laughs> and the next one is 공항 가는데 늦지 마세요. Don't be late when going to the airport because you might miss an airplane, right? So when you want to persuade somebody to not to do something, dissuade them or tell them not to do something, then you use 지 마세요. Okay, this is very simple. Just put 지 마세요 at the end after something that you don't want that person to do. Okay. Well, this is my teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, Alexander. This is teacher Kim Hobunia. And today we'll be talking about something that has happened in the past in the past form of 이에요. And the past form of 9 plus 이에요 and 이에요 is 이었어요 or 였어요. Okay, so let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Uh, so first example is 어제 친구 새일이었어요. Yesterday was my friend's birthday. Next one is 아침에 밥을 못 먹었어요. I could not eat food in the morning. 저는 어릴 때부터 잘생겼어요. I was handsome from when I was little. Story of my life. I'm just kidding. And so to simplify things, 이었어요, 이었어요, you put it at the end of sentence indicating something that happened in the past. And this is my teacher Kim, hope this was helpful, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, and this is teacher Kim Hobini, and today we'll be learning about another variation of but, which is 지만. And 지만 is used in a lot of middle of sentences to indicate however but, that there's two different sides, two different aspects to what he or she wants to express. Okay. So let's get to exercise right away. <laughs> Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So, Chiman is a conjunctive ending, the conjunctive clause in Chiman and the concluding and concluding clause each specifies its own tense independently. Okay, so for example, 
저는 우유를 좋아하지만 치즈는 안 좋아해요. I like milk, but don't like cheese. Okay, so it says that I like milk, however, but I don't like cheese. Next one is 영화 보러 가고 싶었지만 피곤해서 안 갔어요. So I wanted to go see the movies, but I didn't go because I was tired. Okay, and then last one. 이 시계는 싸지만 기능이 많아요. This watch is cheap but have a lot of functionality or lots of functionality. So Jiman is just very simple using the middle of sentence to indicate that there's another uh, situation or another side to whatever topic that is happening right now. So this is my teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Alexander. This is teacher Kim Hobini and today we'll be talking about something that you don't want to do, something you dislike to do, which means something 기싫다. 하기 싫다. Okay, so let's look at exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So in order to make a verb into a noun, the nominalizing suffix 기 is attached to the verb stem. It responds to English ing or infinitive to do. So for example, if you if I don't want to go to school, I can say 저는 학교 가기 싫어요. 학교 가기 싫어요. Cause I don't want to go to school. Okay, so you just put uh, 기 싫어요 right before 가기, which 가 means to go. So you put it right before the verb of something that you don't want to do. The next one is 밥 먹기 싫어요. I don't want to eat. Okay, so you also put it right before 먹다, which means to eat. Okay. The next one is 전화 받기 싫어요. I don't want to answer the phone. So 받는다, which means to receive. So you put it right before that, which you turn into 받기. And then 받기 싫어요 means don't want to answer. And 전화 is phone. So I don't want to answer the phone. Okay. So uh, this is just very simple. Always put this at the end, right before the verb of something that you don't want to do. So 뭐, uh, 지금 공부하기 싫어요. 지금 밥 먹기 싫어요. So it's very simple things to do. Uh, to express some discontent or something that you don't want to do. Okay, and I hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Alexander, the teacher Kim Bobania. And today we'll be learning about from. How to say from in Korean, which is 한테서. Okay, so 한테서 sound might sound similar to 한테, which means to. Okay, but when you put 서 at the end of to, 한테 becomes 한테서. It means from. Okay. So we usually put 한테서 right before someone you got something from. Okay, so let's look at exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So from 한테서, 에게서 is used with nouns referring to persons. 서 can be omitted. In conversation, 한테서 is frequently used. So for example, 선생님 한테서 선물 받았어요, which means I got a gift from the teacher. Okay. So who did the gift come from? Teacher. So you put teacher 선생님 in front of 한테서, which is from. And next one is 형한테서 편지 왔어요. I got a letter from a brother. And next one is 이 이야기는 아버지 한테서 들었어요. I heard the story from dad. So who did the who did you hear the story from? Dad. So 아버지 한테서 들었어요. Okay. So just know put 한테서 or right before someone that you heard or got something from and after that you can uh, put what you received. Okay, well this is pretty simple to use. 한테서 from and I hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, it's is teacher Kim Bobinia. Today we will be learning about how to say before in Korean which means 뭐 기전에. 기전에. Okay, so we usually put let's say the situation A. So before situation A you should do B. So it's very simple, you put it in between. Okay, so let's see what I mean by it in the exercise. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So, 기전에 means before, and so for example, 자기 전에 일을 닦아요. I brush my teeth before going to school. Okay, so that makes sense. So, before going to school, what do you do? I brush my teeth. Okay, so that makes sense. 날씨가 추워지기 전에 잠바를 사요. I buy jacket before it gets cold outside. Okay, so 날씨가 추워지기 전에 before it gets cold outside, 잠바를 사요. I buy jacket. Okay, 
And the last one is 공부하기 전에 커피를 마셔요. So I drink coffee before studying. Okay. So a lot of these things are flipped. So if you look at the black parts, not the red parts. So for the last example, if you look 공부하, which is the first three uh, black parts, is before studying or studying. And then coffee my show is I drink coffee. So a lot of them are flipped in English because Korean and English has a different uh, sentence structure. That's why it's uh, flipped. But just know that before A, you do B. Okay, so well, A, 하기 전에, B를 해요. So as long as you remember that, it gets very simple. Okay, well, this is my teacher, Kim. Hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Samuel's teacher, Kim Hobini. And today we'll be learning about how to say when, why, which is so when something is happening, while something is happening, you can do this. Or while something is happening, you're doing this. Okay. So let's get to your exercise to see what I mean. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So 을때 is when, while. The pattern 을때 uh, can be used without any verb. It corresponds to English when or while. Okay. So for example, number one, 바쁠 때는 택시를 타요. So when I am busy, I take taxi. Okay. So this when can be also replaced by while. While I'm busy, I take taxi. So next one is 배고플 때는 라면 먹어요. When I'm hungry, I eat noodles. And last one, 아플 때는 병원 가요. When I am sick, I go to hospital. So you put when while. 을 때는 or 을 때, right before a situation, and then because of the situation, you're doing something. Okay, so it's a pretty simple to memorize. While something happens, you can do it. When something is happens, you can do this. Okay, 뭐뭐뭐 을 때는 뭐뭐 해도 돼요. Okay, so this has been Teacher Kim, and I hope this was helpful. And see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, excellent. This is Teacher Kim Hobini, and today we'll be talking about how to say because. Okay, which means 먹기 때문에. Okay, and we usually do it with two different situations. Okay, so let's say the situation A. Because of situation A, 뭐뭐 A 때문에 B. Because of situation A, B happens. Okay, so let's see what I mean by it in exercises. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Okay, so 기 때문에 is a casual conjunctive ending. It may be used with any verb or adjective, and the tense infix is at get can be used if necessary but you don't need to use it if it's not necessary so let's see what i mean by it. first example is 요즘 바쁘기 때문에 여행을 못 가요 because i'm busy these days i cannot go travel so you can see how before 기 때문에 because it says i'm busy these days 요즘 바쁘기 okay so because of i'm busy these days i cannot go travel 여행을 못 가요 the next one is 저는 아프기 때문에 병원에 가요 because I am sick, I cannot go to hospital. The next one is 친구한테 돈을 빌려줬기 때문에 지금 돈이 없어요. Okay, so why does he not have money right now? Because I lent money to my friend, I don't have money right now. 친구한테 돈을 빌려줬기 때문에 지금 돈이 없어요. That's why it's very important when you're lending money, you have to be very careful. And when you're lending money, what I learned from my own personal experience is that lend money that you don't mind not getting it back okay? because you're going to think too much about the money uh, so just, just if, if you can trust that person or if you just want to give the person and you don't mind getting it back then you can lend the money okay? so but it's, it's hard to lend the money expecting the money to be back but okay? well, this is not related to a korean lesson so just know that 뭐뭐기 때문에 is used in between situation and situation in between situation a and situation b because of a b happen and in between you put 때 때문에 well, this has been teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, this is teacher Kim Hobini. And today we'll be talking about with slash and, which means 이랑 or 랑. Okay, so there's a lot of a with and phrases, words in Korean such as 하고, 랑, 와, 과. There's a lot, but this is used most often during a conversational Korean. So let's get to exercises right away. <laughs> Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So conjunctive particle 이랑 하고 와가 are used between nouns or nominals. We use 이랑 하고 more often than 와 과 in conversations. Okay, and we use 
lang if it comes after nouns ending in a vowel, but we put e right before lang if it comes after a noun ending in a consonant. So let's look at the first exercise, which is 어제 친구랑 같이 점심 먹었어요. I ate lunch with a friend yesterday. And for this instance, we only put lang because 친구 ends with a vowel, which means u, which is u. Because that's why only lang is put in there. And next one is 주말에 가족이랑 여행 갈 거예요. I will go to trip with, with my family during the weekend. Okay, so we put 이랑 because 가족, 족 ends with 기억 받침, which is consonant. And then the next one is 저는 닭이랑 김치를 좋아해요. Again, 닭 is ends with 리얼 기억, and 기억 is consonant. So that's why you put 이랑. I like chicken and kimchi. We use more of 이랑, 랑, 하고 more in a conversation Korean compared to 와 and 과. So 와 and 과 is usually put into a lot of uh, written Korean and more formal Korean. So if you want to express something with something, something and something, then we always use uh, 이랑 or 랑. Hope this was helpful and this is teacher Kim and see you next time. Bye bye. Hey Lux and this is teacher Kim Hobinia and today we'll be talking about Pake. Pake, which means only. Okay, so when we use this only, we usually put it after a noun or verb or uh, adjective, and then we end it with a negative phrase such as opta anida. Something like that. So let's look at exercises to see what I mean. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So, pake, which comes after noun, indicates only, and this article is always followed by negative words like anida, opta, anhada, motada, moruda. Okay, so the first example is 시험 공부를 조금밖에 못했어요. So I could only study a little bit for the test. So only, pake, 못했어요. Could not study. 한국어는 반년밖에 못했어요. I studied Korean only for half a year. So 밖에 only 못했어요 is could not do. And 저는 돈이 5천 원밖에 없어요. I only have five dollars as cash. 밖에 is only and 없어요 is don't have. So it means I only have five dollars as cash. Okay. So 밖에 can be a little bit complicated because you have to put it after a noun or sometimes adjective or verb and then end it with a negative clause or negative now uh negative words but as long as you get the hang of it uh and if you hear a lot of people say then you will get the hang of it okay hope this was helpful and this is teacher kim and see you next time bye bye hey lux and this is teacher kim over here today we'll be learning about how to say to begin in korean because it's very important to begin something, right? And you want to express it to your friends, family, or anybody that you started something, you started writing a book, you started building a company, you started building your school or textbook, anything, okay? So how to say to begin to in Korean is 뭐기 시작했어요? Something, something 기 시작했어요. Okay, and we put the verb of what you started in the beginning, before 기 시작했어요. Okay, so let's see what I mean by it in the exam. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So for example, 저는 유튜브에서 티처 킴이랑 같이 한국어 공부하기 시작했어요. I began to study Korean by watching Teacher Kim on YouTube. Okay, this is hopefully something that majority of my students will say, and hopefully they've learned a lot from it. So 기시작했어요, that's the end, and 공부하기, 공부하다 is the verb of to study, right? So you put the right before 기시작했어요, and can turn into 공부하기 시작했어요. Okay, and the next one is 피아노는 어릴 때부터 치기 시작했어요. I began to play piano since I was little. Okay, so piano is piano and 치기 is 치다 is to play. Okay, so you put the right before 시작했어요, which is to begin. So 치기 시작했어요, began to play. Okay, so it's very uh, simple. You just put it uh, at the end with the right before the verb of what you started, and you can express anything that you started to anybody that you want. This is from Teacher Kim. Hope this was helpful, and see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, and this is Teacher Kim Hobin, and today we'll be learning about how to say it seems like in Korean. Okay, so it can be a little tricky because there's two ways of saying it, and those two ways can be very similar and also very different at the same time. So those two things are near got kateo and nien got kateo. Okay, so let's see what I mean by what's the difference between 니은 거 같아요 and 니은 거 같아요 in the exercises.
Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. Niengo katayo is a sentence ending used with any verb or adjective and brings an idea of likelihood. Okay, and then, but liengo katayo is used when we have no clue about the situation, but when we have a clue about a situation, we use ingo katayo. Okay, so we use the first one. If you have a clue, if you have no clue, use the second one. So let's get the first exercise to explain in more details. I umshigen mashin niengo katayo. Because certain nian, nin, so it seems like this food is tasty, knowing that you have a clue, okay? But if you say, i umshigen mashisil ko gatayo, it seems like this food will be tasty. So you have no idea, but just from the looks at it, you, you think it's going to taste good, but you have no idea because you haven't actually tasted it. The next one is, pi ongo gatayo. Okay, so it starts with nian, so it seems like it rained. So you have a clue, so you look outside, the ground is wet, so it seems like it rained, okay? But if you say pi orko katayo, it means it seems like it will rain, okay? So it didn't rain yet, but looking at outside, there's a lot of clouds, it seems like it's going to rain. So, but it doesn't mean that you are, are sure it happened, okay? You're just guessing. And next one is motbongo katayo, it seems like I didn't see it, okay? So it's had something happened before, but mo porko gatayo, which means it seems like I will not see it. Okay. So just know that niun ko gatayo is something that has happened in the past, and you have a, some idea detail about uh, what happened. Okay. But liun ko gatayo is something that will happen in the future. You don't have a specific clue, but you just think that it will happen. Okay. So it seems like. Okay. So those are two seems like phrases that you can use in Korean. Both are very helpful. Then all, and then most of these are used by the, at the end of sentences with uh, some situation in the front. So hope this was helpful and see you next time. Bye bye, this is Teacher Kim. Hello Tinder, this is Teacher Kim Hobani and today I'll be talking about how to say if in Korean. If in Korean is 면. Okay, but unlike if in uh, English sentences, 면 is not put in the front. So it's actually put it as a conditional ending of a clause that happened in the beginning. So if something happened, then this will happen, okay? And a myeon in Korean itself, as a noun, is a noodles. But if you put it as a conditional ending, then it becomes it. So let's get to exercise right away. Teacher Kim, subscribe and like. So 의면 is a conditional ending. The subject of 의면 clause, if different from that of main clause, usually takes the particle 이 or 가. If both subject are the same, the particle of the subject of the 의면 clause is 있는. Okay, so when we when do we use 면 compared to 의면? So we use 면 if it comes after verb stems ending in a vowel or a consonant 리. But we use 의면 if it comes after verb stems ending in a consonant except the consonant 리. So let's look at the first exercise. 머리가 아프면 이 약을 드세요. If head hurts, eat this medicine. Okay. So we use 의면 here because the verb stem ends in a vowel. Okay. 푸, 으. Okay. And next one is 내일 시간이 있으면 갈게요. If I have a time tomorrow, I will go. Okay. And this one we use 의면 because verb stem ends in a consonant, which is eat. 상시오 is a vowel. The next one is 시험에 늦으면 안 돼요. If you're late for test, that is not okay. Okay, which means don't be late for test. Okay, so we use 의면 because 늦 ends with a 지옥 받침, which is a consonant. So we use 의면. The next one is 여기서 담배 피우면 안 돼요. If you smoke here, that is not okay, which alternate means don't smoke here. So if the phrase according to what your if statement is in A, if that applies, then B happens. So for example, 시험에 늦으면 안 돼요. So if you're late for test, that is not okay. So it means don't be late for test. Okay. So just 면 is always in between. If something A happens, then B should happen. Okay. Well, this is Teacher Kim, and hope this was helpful, and see you next time. Bye-bye.